SmokeEmBR.com. That's SmokeEmBR.com. Brandon Holly here. Did you know Relief Windows is the window door, hardy plank, and vinyl siding and interior shutter headquarters of the Gulf South? That's right. For nearly 20 years, we have provided you with a lifetime guarantee. Relief from the heat, cold, storms, and sun. So go where thousands have gone to upgrade the exterior and the interior of their homes. ReliefWindows.com. That's ReliefWindows.com. Relief Windows. Yo, Jake and T-Bob here. We've been talking about the All-Star Toyota rentals for a while. So during vacation season, we wanted to remind you about them. That's right. All-Star Toyota has daily, weekly, and monthly rentals with flexible plans and competitive rates that blow the other places out of the water. In fact, you can rent a new Toyota for as little as $60 a day. These rentals are perfect for out-of-town trips, for business, or pleasure. All-Star Toyota located on Airline at Goodwood. Check out their website at allstartoyotaofbatonrouge.com slash rental. People you know, cars you trust. All-Star our Toyota. Insurance companies have teams of professionals to fight your claim. If you want to know what your case is really worth, I'm Spencer Callahan. I'd like to help. Spencer Callahan is the one to see. Call 387 LA filing number 16-7970. WNXX, Jackson, KNXX, Donaldsonville, and WDGLHD2 Baton Rouge. This hour brought to you by Spencer Callahan Injury Lawyers. LA 21-12681. Offices in Baton Rouge. Good morning. It's 7 a.m. on Thursday, April 11th. Today in Baton Rouge, you can expect partly cloudy skies with a high of 76. In hour one of today's show, we'll talk some LSU spring football. Also, we'll preview Pelicans and Kings. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN. And watch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel. Hour number one of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge studio, starts now. Let we go! All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what up, y'all? Welcome in. Gonna be a fun day today. Thursday, baby. That's right. Weekend starting now. Masters week. How about it? Masters starting up today. A little bit of a delay, though, as uh, I think it would have been teeing off right now. So for all you uh, link heads out there, um, it is going to be an hour from now, at least. Uh, that same storms that we dealt with yesterday, Augusta dealing with today, which is a kind of crazy weekend where, like, for a lot of day one, you may be dealing with, like, 40 to 45 mile-per-hour winds, like uh in insane rain you know a couple inches of rain and then it's gonna be beautiful for the rest of the weekend so who can survive day one and then go into the next three uh that's going to be great to see golf in the air make a little top golf date tonight to celebrate uh is what's this, up guys is this utopia for all golf fans oh hell yeah man this is uh you know how it is this is this is daytona week if you love nascar this is wrestlemania if you love wrestling, uh, it's a Super Bowl. It is. I don't know if we love the college football national championship. Our like Super, that, I mean, randomly. Super Bowl because if your team's not in it, and- yeah, yeah, but Super Bowl still has like the. You kind of it kind of feels like a holiday of sorts, almost like everybody's in on it. Everybody's going to watch it. You never don't have Super Bowl plans. You will a lot of times not have college football national championship plans. Also, it's on like a rant. It's like on a Monday, so you're kind of a lot of times just. Uh, like, I'll just watch it. You know, I'm just going to watch it at home. Um, but, yeah, was like some sports have these these big singular moments. And uh, certainly in golf, Masters Week, I would say, would be one of them. Uh, how are we doing today, guys? Everybody doing well? Feeling good? Excited? Ready to do some uh, local mid-morning sports talk? Regional. Yes. I will say We're that- not local. Regional mid-morning <laughs> sports talk. I don't know if it's mid morning either. No, no, sorry. Okay, yeah. so, okay. Uh, I hate you. Regional. Okay, I think I think y'all are kind of um, missing the point here. I'm just asking how you're doing. Uh, On our regional sports morning talk show. Sports ish. Yes, yes. Morning that, talk that, show. that is correct. Sports is adjacent. Correct. Yeah. Um, so okay, you know what? I don't, I don't. I guess I don't actually care how you're doing anymore. 
Uh, where do you want to start? I, I want to start with some SEC baseball stars <laughs> thoughts. As uh, where do you want to start? I'm going to start here at this. SEC. Well, because every time I mean, I just, okay, I just asked everyone doing y'all, y'all that gave me the the worst answers I've ever heard. And then every time I ask where do you want to start, everybody just sits there on their you hands. You didn't let and us like, answer. Oh, you said what, I don't care how you're doing. Because what and happened? Then moved on. No, that's because when I asked you, y'all were like, <laughs> and then what happened when I asked where do you want to start a few days ago or the time before that? Do y'all remember? Because I do. What mm-hmm. happened? Nobody I know, answered. I know where I want to start. You all sat on your I hands like you're about to give yourself a stranger. Go ahead, Taylor. Where I want to start? start with asking Jake and Alondra how they're doing. Jake, oh, how are you? Gosh, gosh, I'm doing great. You know, thankfully the weather was not too bad yesterday. Yes, we had to cancel school at a precaution, but thankfully it was not that bad. And by the end of the day, it was actually a nice day. So yeah. thank yeah. you, Taylor. Alondra. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm super excited. I'm not going to be doing here well, tomorrow. Okay? Not I'm doing, doing good. Well. That's bad English. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm not going to be here tomorrow, which I'm really glad about because T ball is about to get on my last nerve. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's a lot to look forward to this weekend. So uh, skipping work, Taylor. How about yeah, yourself? Yeah, skipping uh, work. Doing just well, just like you did. I was telling Alondra we tried to have tostadas last night for the first time. Yeah. Uh friggin' Walmart gave us a bag of broken tostadas, mm, so we had nachos instead. A yeah. little disappointed. They're on my list right behind Jeff Bezos. Yeah. So also so to the your Waltons early and, and Bezos. Yeah. Okay. To your earlier comment, my team's never in the Super Bowl, and I do enjoy the Super Bowl every year. Okay. So yeah, uh, my team's only been there one time. Yeah. Uh, actually, both the teams that I rooted for, you know, Saints growing up and then the Chargers. So. I, I, I know that, Jake, I know you're a Walmart grocery guy. I, I think Walmart groceries in 2024 is pretty wild. Yeah, bro. I can't do Walmart I feel groceries. like if you so, show up for tostadas from Walmart, you get exactly what you deserve. Well, you, like, like, you need to put like, an asterisk <laughs> by it for me, though. Like, we only buy, like, literally a handful of things at Walmart, okay. and that's just because... You can get bigger portions, and I got five kiddos. I, you look, can also I, do I'm not getting fruit. I'm not getting vegetables. I'm not getting. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not okay. Getting as long as you're not getting meat. produce, that's fine. No meat. No. no. Okay, I'll that's about fine. To say, if you're getting like no Gatorades and like stuff like that, okay, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. So you're not showing up for tostadas there. No. no the no. reasoning behind it, Victoria does uh, grocery pickups. Did anybody remember asking for the reasoning? No, I don't think. I don't. I don't. Did because we were going to play. There was like an attack of sorts. So no, she does a grocery pickups because I'm never home and she works from home yeah it's easy for her we got we got walmart we got a local grocery store the local grocery store doesn't do grocery pickup so um, there's your answer um yeah whatever happened to just going wow, up and so down every aisle yeah. a and local like radio out. show you're just not supporting local business great job i mean Taylor. i do like i you mean said, i'm alexander t-bob's rouses mm-hmm. i mean we just try to keep it mm-hmm. local mm-hmm. here you know mm-hmm. yeah. mm-hmm. Hate to see it. um all right but okay so for real does anybody because like we have Harold Perkins sound first in the document. I don't think that's a terribly exciting place to start. That feels like a three to five minute interlude somewhere in the show. LSU softball had a walk off win they last did. night over Southeastern. They had South a walk off win um, and was, extras. And and, and it's, like, it's four two going into yep. seventh. Yeah, couple of big rallies from the softball team last night. We'll talk to Coach Betterina at eight a.m. We'll talk to Jay Johnson at eight thirty. Uh, and 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 it was look. The way that LSU softball lost Monday night, you will be hard-pressed to find a more depressing way to lose a game. Uh, You have a big lead. You're up 5-1. Florida comes back and forces extras. Uh, They end up winning the game, I believe, was it 7-6 or 6-5? But uh, every single run they scored to come back, unearned, including in the eighth when you strike out the best hitter in the SEC to end the inning, but it gets away from the catcher. Errant throw to first, and the game-winning run scores. Like you could play that game a hundred more times, yeah. and that never happens uh, again once. So to take that psychological blow and bounce back and do what you did last night, I would say yes, Coach uh, Tarina's squad displaying some mental toughness. Um, the same mental toughness that this LSU baseball team is going to have to display uh, because Tennessee just beat. Alabama A and M, uh, twenty to two, and if you look at Tennessee's last three games, they lose game one at Auburn, then they come back, they win twelve two, they win nineteen to five, um, and I gotta be honest, y'all, I am a bit terrified right now for LSU's pitching staff, a staff which has not been very good anyway. Um, a team ERA of over seven. And even Luke Holman, who's been awesome in conference, has like an ERA of four. 
Now, Griffin Herring leads the SEC, uh, and, and he's like a .63 in conference. So, again, I whenever I look up statistics, while it's fun to look up season stats because you see things like Charlie Conan's already got 20 home runs, which boggles yeah. the mind. Um, four series in, I think maybe there's more insight to be gained by your SEC only statistics. And so I dove into Tennessee and, um, oof, boys, these offensive numbers are, uh, they ain't nothing to play with. Uh, Tennessee leads the SEC with a 331 team batting average. Uh, for reference, LSU's at 248. Uh, they are the top slugging team in the conference. They have the second best on base percentage in the conference. They lead the SEC in hits and runs scored. They have hit 35 home runs in SEC play. For context, UGA second has hit 26. Mm-hmm. So you've hit nearly 10 more in the second place team, nearly uh, 50% more. Um, you have two players hitting over 400 in SEC play. Blake Burke is hitting 442, leads the SEC in hits. Kavaris Tears is hitting 415. Uh, he's near the top of the lead in runs scored. Christian Moore, for good measure, hitting 364 and leads the coverage of total bases. Oh, and then you have Dylan Drelling, who leads the SEC with 20 ribbies. Again, these are all in-conference numbers. Um, to give you some context on what LSU looks like, your top SEC hitter is Braswell at 333. And he may not even start anymore. And then how crazy is this? Who do you think is next on the list in conference play? Batting average wise. Pearson? Mm-mm. Nope. He's not even in the he, top. Yeah, I was uh, to say, he's he not even in the yeah. top. He's not even in the top three after Braswell. Because of the way you framed it, mm-hmm. uh Mag Bingham. Nope. Nope. It's a um it's a name that uh we generally think doesn't play well in conference play, but has a huge bat in the midweek. Bear Jones. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Actually hitting 283 in SEC play, second on the team. Then it goes all the way down to Travinsky at 262, and then Tommy White's at 260, guys. It's weird. It's a weird time in the old SEC for LSU right now. And uh, the analytics are saying their projected SC record, 12-18 and 18 at this point. So, Which would lead them at home at for home. the postseason. Out of the playoff. Out of the tournament. Which, right, let's be painfully clear – uh, you are already into scramble for the tournament mode. Need every single win that you can possibly cobble together. And as you're entering that mode, beyond the shadow of a doubt, you have to go to Lindsey Nelson against what is easily the best hitting team in the SEC, which is very well set up to take advantage of what is the biggest weakness of your team, which is just a complete, it's so crazy how much of a strength you thought it was going to be, but just a complete lack of depth in the bullpen. And even on the starters, I mean, just just a lack of pitching well, uh, in general. I mean, you feel like there's there's two guys, and Gage Jump still is is not completely dominant or anything. You still feel good about him. No, but they're legit starters, though. Holman and Jump are legit good starters, and then you have Herring. Stop. And that's yeah. It. That, was, that was a tape. The tape stopped. <laughs> <laughs> and then, no, I think that's uh, the mics didn't uh, turn off though. The tape stopped because that was that was it. We gosh, we went through the. The bullpen ERAs, whatever day that was, Monday maybe, and it is truly just herring right now yeah. of guys that have, have pitched enough to to qualify and to to make a difference. And so, like you're at a you're in a point now that Friday's game is like a have to must win, gotta have because you feel like that's your your opportunity. And Jay talked about that. That's why he brought in Griffin Herring, you know, against Vanderbilt. That's why Griffin Herring's not starting the third game of these series. Yeah. It's because you got to get one. You got to get a win. And, and Holman's been one of the best pitchers in the country, and so he gives you an opportunity. He gives you a chance. But that's where you're at right now. And the thing that is troublesome is it's guys that have done it before that are down there in the bullpen just not doing it right now. Yeah, and and that's where we, you know, that's where I think some of the the conversations regarding, uh, like we said, Yeski and the West Johnson changeover. You started to look at that, say what's going on, um, because yeah, you have the Thatcher Hurd regressing to how he looked at the beginning of last season, right at the end. Um, I, I think Agenhausen's still fine. Agenhausen is right on the edge of being in the Griffin Herring territory. In fact, if you know, if if some butts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a happy Christmas. We all know this, but. If he had found a way to get those final four outs the other night, then we would be placing Ackenhausen right there in the uh, in the Herring 
category, but I'm still wondering, like Gidry, Heard, why isn't there why isn't there more uh there? For for what it's worth, we didn't talk about it all yesterday, but um they did look great in the midweek. But that's kind of the problem. I mean, Bear Jones smashing three home runs. The pitching staff pit, throwing a shutout. I mean, not not a very good team. Uh, but but that's that's the thing about this LSU team, though. Like, I've 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 always said it right. The midweek only really matters contingent upon how the weekends are going. Yeah. If the weekends are going well and you're getting into conversations about seating and all this other sort of stuff and trying to host, well, then midweek takes on importance. But again, I don't care if you 40 0 the midweek. If you go 12 and 18 in the SEC, it means nothing. And so while it's good to see the boys uh, you put together maybe a confident game heading into Tennessee this weekend, it's not like you're going to sit here as a fan and be super excited about it. I wonder how much. So we saw some different things in the midweek game. We saw a completely different lineup. I mean, you saw some guys in spots that we've never really seen them. And, and yeah, so true. you're in a point where you're in change mode and you're like, hey, we got to figure it out mode. And you realize that your 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 clock's running out. You talked about what is it? Twelve wins predicted that right is, now. That is, yeah, that's D one baseball predicting a twelve and eighteen record right now. If if they're just going by whatever numbers they use. And so you start to look at like who is going to be somebody they use on the weekend that they they haven't. That it's only been a, a midweek guy. Now I I don't know what that list of candidates looks like, but when you got y- your bullpen. You've got Lord six four six. You got Thatcher Hurd six five nine. You got Bucknum six seven five. Ackenhausen six seven five. ERAs. Okay, are you going to give Aiden Moffitt a chance? He got a chance against McNeese. Came in, had a couple strikeouts. Right now, he's only pitching eight games. One two nine ERA. Yeah. Okay, now he's got a trouble with free passes, but are, does he get an opportunity now? Because you've rolled a bunch of guys out there, and all the ERAs say six, six <laughs> something. <laughs> In front of them. So it's like, hey, are we going to say, you know what? We 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 know we evaluated these guys in the fall and he wasn't quite there yet, but we gotta try something. We gotta do something different because you're just not getting outs. Yeah, uh yeah, and then like if you're gonna get shelled by Tennessee either way, uh there is some I can kind of get behind the logic of well, let's get shelled at least trying something new. Uh so is it Kucherek? Right. Yes. Yes. Um, he got the start at shortstop. Do you think that carries over into the weekend? I don't because he uh, hasn't been hitting. He, yeah. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was 0 for three with three strikeouts. Yeah. Against Minis, right? Mm. Scored yeah. 16 runs, like, and then he gets the opportunity to go out there and, and be the starting shortstop and 0 for three, three strikeouts. Jay so, Johnson said something about it. I can't remember what he said. I have the thing if you want to listen to it. I and I mean, know. you can't, um, yeah, I mean, you can't really, again, Michael Braswell's your leading SEC hitter. So, uh, although the defense has been disastrous, especially that sixth inning era last weekend, and Jay obviously very upset about that, kind of uh, painting it as the root of all evil in terms of how the weekend played out. Um, ah, Braswell's just got to get it together defensively. I don't know if he has the yips or what's going on, but he's just there. There's really no other option. He just has to get it right. If Kucherek's going to do that, so uh, we'll see, man. We'll see. Sometimes though, things look darkest before the dawn. You know, we're getting dangerously close to needing to look up the Samwise Gamgee uh, speech from the end of Two Towers uh, as a source of inspiration. The thing is, though, things just feel so bad that I don't know that we even should waste the Samwise speech quite yet. <laughs> Maybe though. Um, anything else on baseball before we uh, move on? Going once? It's going to be a chaotic atmosphere in Knoxville. Uh, yeah. They, they are, don't like LSU very much. They don't like LSU. Um, obviously, everybody remembers what you did to them last year when it looked like they had you cornered. Looked like they had you exactly where they would want you, and somehow you managed to pull it off. And then you, you know, you take a natty from a team, though. Again, a team, though, in Tennessee that you can maybe take some inspiration from, given that they started five and ten and finished fifteen and fifteen last year. They went ten and five. Or second half. The problem is, it doesn't even feel like you're going to be starting five and ten. It feels like you're staring uh, four and eleven, maybe even. Uh, Three and twelve in the face. If 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 you can't snag one this weekend, um. All right, we'll see that. We'll continue to break it out. We'll talk to Jay Johnson at eight thirty and see what he's 
plan on doing try to get it right this weekend. Uh, more OTB. Let's talk a little Pelicans. Big game tonight in Sacramento. Coming up next here on Off the Bench. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. GoTommies.com. That's the website for Tommy's windows, doors, and siding. When you go Tommy's, you're going to see the difference clearly. You go to GEAUXTommies.com today, and, uh, well, you can, you can get right at the top, there's a little button, view our work, right? If you, if you want to see the work for yourself, whether you're looking for um, vinyl or hardy plague signing, uh, vinyl or wood windows, any type of door Tommy's has you, and they, they have integrity, they're dependable, they're professional, they are efficient, okay? You want a few reasons to go with Tommy's Windows, Doors, and Sidings? They're fully licensed, bonded, and insured. They have over 20 years of experience. They work in Baton Rouge and throughout all of Louisiana. We always mention the Angie's uh, List Super Service Award. It's been seven years running, and they get free professional estimates. G-E-A-U-X-Tommy's.com. I mean, so many different testimonials you can find right there on the website. Tommy's Windows did an amazing job. The crew showed up on time, courteous, and did an excellent job. I also appreciate the fact that Tommy called to let us know about the order when it came in and kept us up to speed all throughout the process. GoTommies.com. Our listeners fire off their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. a mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know so go the extra mile it's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there mercedes-benz vans Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Hey, it's Hunt. Join me for a Thursday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show presented by Rouse's Joe Healy talking SEC baseball and Chris Blair on the Fighting Tigers. Hunt Palmer Show, one to three weekdays, 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge. This is number one champion sound. Yeah, yeah Estelle, we about to get down. get down. Who the hottest in the world right now? Just touched down in London town. 
bet they give me a pound. Tell them put the money in my hand right now. Set up a motor, we need more seats. We just sold out all the floor seats. All Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 11:30 The Tiger. What's happening, y'all? Welcome back. OTB uh, Pelicans must win tonight for the Murder Birds, guys, as, uh, well, uh, three games left, okay? Three games left, and you, despite the disastrous home stretch in which it felt like, I mean, Lucy, if we go back to our Charlie Brown analogy that we always use in terms of will Lucy let us kick the football? Uh, yeah. I think so. I think we're finally going to kick it this time. You know, I mean, we are right here. Last few steps before we're going to know. And uh, so much hinges on tonight as you're going to square up in Sacramento with the Kings. Uh, your one point dog. So, you know, functionally a pick em for whatever that is worth. Um, you remain a half game up on uh, the Phoenix Suns. If you were to win tonight you would guarantee uh, that you would finish ahead of the Sacramento Kings. So they would be eliminated from six-seed competition. In fact, they need you to go 0-3, and, and they need to go 3-0, and and then they would be the six-seed. So they have a lot to play for as well, obviously, tonight. Like, no no more important game for them than this. Um, but if you win tonight, you eliminate the Kings, and you maintain that one-game lead over the Suns with two to play. Uh, it could not get bigger for tonight, the entire season coming down to this for your New Orleans Pelicans. You've put yourself in this position, in a good position. Like, you control everything right now. And you're going to go on the road. It's going to be a tough game. This is a very good team, and they give unique matchups. And and Sabonis is one of the best bigs in the NBA, and you have to be able to handle that. And and we know that they've got scores with Fox and other players, uh, but they haven't. They haven't been playing their best. No, they've here not. Here down the stretch, right? So you have to take advantage of that uh, for you know whatever the reason is why they haven't been playing well, why they haven't been able to finish these games. Like you have to continue that for them. And so I'd love to see the Pelicans come out and, and have a mentality of we're in control. You know what I'm saying? Like we are the team that you have to beat, right? Mm-hmm. Because. We right now control our own destiny, and yeah. that mentality I think would would serve them very very well in a matchup like this. And so, I, you know, I like I like the Pelicans. I, I like them away from home too, which is crazy. Like you mentioned, the home stand. Yeah, we're. I mean, like they are twenty six and fourteen. Wow, away from the blender right now. Yeah, uh, which I believe I mean uh, tied for the Western Conference lead in terms of road wins. Right there with the T-Wolves and the NBA as a whole, the only better road team would be the Celtics, who are obviously having the best season in uh, the entirety of the NBA. How about Drew Holiday? Four-year, $130 million extension from the Boston Celtics. Uh, The fact that you had Drew Holiday and Anthony Davis and couldn't find more consistent success, like I know you won that series against the Blazers, but the fact that you had that is such an indictment of that regime of the Pelicans and how poorly it was run from a coaching and front office yeah. standpoint. Uh, because Drew Holiday has gone on to be like, like a very like one of the best players in the NBA. But more so, he's just gone on to be. If you are building a championship team, he is like a key cog and yeah. a key piece, and you just kind of wasted him for so long here. I mean, good for him. I didn't. I didn't know that. He was in a point in his career where he would no, get where he an would extension still get that. like that. Yeah, no, that's insane, man. That's insane. That's going to be his like fourth big contract. Got to be or some at this point. Because he got a big contract from the Bucks too. But yeah. no, it's worse than that. I mean, I get that he was towards the end of his career, but Demarcus Cousins was a productive player on that team as well. Yeah, you had, and you had and, AD Cousins well, and Holiday. And to be fair, to maybe be fair to the front office, if, if Cousins doesn't pop his Achilles, you know, they, the they, 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 he pops it too fighting hard for a rebound at the end of that Rockets game, which was like a statement win in and of itself. So, whatever. Okay, let's get... So, wh- one more point on the Pelicans-Kings matchup. The Pelicans have actually taken down the Kings all four times they've played this year. They this are is their four, fifth game? This is their fifth game 
New Orleans leads the series four to nothing. A- average margin of victory for the Pelicans, 21 points. Okay. I like in these that. Four games. But I'm a little nervous about that, right? <laughs> like, it's just like, I- I'd almost feel better if it was like 2 2 on the year. Uh, that, well, they that haven't feels... played since January, but they have played four times. Um, Pelicans, 129 93, 117 112, 127 117. The last time, 33 point victory, 133 to 100. And. That was in Sacramento as well. Both teams 5-5 five and five in their last 10, so it's not like either team's in um, better form. And look, if you're like me, you probably still find yourself, uh, every time you get stressed out, you start smarting over that Spurs loss again. But let me read you an excerpt from the Sacramento Bee, which shows you that uh, it's not just you, so there's no use in crying over spilled milk. This is from uh, the lead article in the Sacramento Bee right now. Quote, uh, the Kings could have made the final days of this wild Western Conference playoff race so much easier on themselves if they hadn't squandered so many winnable games over the course of the season. They've blown more big leads than anyone cares to count, suffered unthinkable losses to the worst teams in the NBA, including the Blazers, Hornets, Pistons, and Wizards. If the Kings had won those four games, they'd be tied for fifth in the Western Conference. They would have already clinched one of six automatic playoff bursts instead of they are sitting at 8th in the West, and they return to Golden 1 Center in Sacramento to conclude the regular season after blowing another 20-point lead in Tuesday's 112-105 loss to the OKC Thunder. So, again, if I had read that without telling you where it was from and maybe taking some of the names out, uh, you would have likely thought I was talking about the Pelicans. So, uh, you are not unique. You are not special. Every team in the NBA wishes they had games they could get back. Uh, and that's why there's no use in living in the past or crying about the past. The only thing that matters for this Pelicans team is the present, is right now, and getting it done tonight in Sacramento, finding a way to win, and continuing on that path to try to avoid the play-in. Yeah, I don't remember what year it was, maybe two years ago, where like the Timberwolves were awful. And it was like the Pelicans were going to lose to the Timberwolves. Uh, yeah. Like it was, it was going to happen. And probably the Pistons as well. So that article, yeah, hit you in the feels because you've been there as well. It, um, yeah, it, I, 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 mm. which for the most part, the Pelicans have actually done a really nice job this year of not having losses like that. Also, yeah, I mean, that's why the Spurs one does, uh, you know, that's why I mean, you had had no Zion, no BI in that game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that is the other thing. If you can manage to get to a full playoff series and then B.I. comes back and you got kind of a fresh legs, B.I. going into the playoffs, that becomes uh, very exciting in of itself tonight. I'm pretty sure he's confirmed out for tonight, Ingram is, and then uh, the Kings missing Malik Monk. Um, I, I think in terms of keys, obviously, Trey Murphy's going to have to show up. C.J. McCollum's been great lately. Uh, crunch time, Zion has to get the ball. It has to go through him. And then I, I continue to think a lot about Dyson Daniels, you know, and, and and the positionless length that he has brought to this team. And honestly, look, uh, Sacramento, a better offensive team, you're a better defensive team, okay? So here's to hoping that that old adage, defense wins championships, will remain true uh, by the end of tonight. Uh, yeah, Brandon Ingram is out. Najee Marshall uh, still questionable for tonight. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's get it on. Let's get it on. This is why you play the game, to have fun, exciting, relevant matchups down the stretch. And like Zion said earlier, he's never been in this situation yet to his NBA career. Well, guess what? You are now. Go make it happen. You did it on Sunday. Incredible on Sunday. You all took care of business against Portland uh, Monday, Tuesday. I don't know. Whatever day. Okay? And now it's time to do it again in Sacramento. All right. When we get back, more OTB. Keep it locked. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. I want you to go to Trash Rangers. You go to TrashSignUp.com and you can make the switch. That's TrashSignUp.com. And in just three minutes, guys, uh, you can see your number of cans that you want to choose. Uh, you can see your pickup days, the prices. Uh, look, there's a reason why so many of your neighbors have made the switch to uh, Trash Rangers and because it's 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 a better level of service than you get uh, compared to these national companies. And remember, if uh, you need commercial dumpsters for your business, you need roll-off dumpsters available in any size for any project, Trash Rangers has you as well. Just go to TrashSignUp.com. Yeah, you can also pick up the phone, give them a call, and then just tell them what you're looking for. 225-401-0838. Make the switch there. 
T-Bob gave you the website. You can go to TrashRangersLLC.com. You can make the switch there. You can pay your bill. Do it all on the website. You can get that weekly text reminder. Don't ever forget again to put the trash out. You get that service from Trash Rangers, TrashRangersLLC.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. up to reimagine your parks and you imagined big with your help we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish a family-sized water park miles and miles of trails and parks just for your dogs there are more places to splash to explore to run wild and even soar you imagined we delivered gold Breck, your number one park system in the nation Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other... Moscona inviting you to join us for Thursday's AFR. Brian Kelly previews the spring game. We'll hear from the head coach. And Pell's Kings will preview the game. Join us for Thursday's AFR, 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Um, Let's get into that Harold Perkins sound. Uh, and then Jackson Howard entering the transfer portal uh, from LSU. This is, uh, to be clear, I saw this and I'm like, okay. I'm like, hey, who's Jackson Howard? I'm like, okay, I think he's. He was a highly rated 2021 recruit, um, defensive end, kind of edge rusher, uh, NFL bloodlines, correct? Um, now transferring out, uh, seems like a class kid. Well, at least I saw Lon Phillips Sullivan saying that, and I trust Lon um, in terms of having he has a relationships with a lot of these guys. Uh, wish Jackson Howard nothing but the best. Outside looking in, uh, when you get a coach like Peoples, to coach that position. And and I, I told you all, when I went to the Senior Bowl, uh, one thing that I kind of got uh, critiqued about by fellow members of the industry 
was not showing enough excitement over the people's hiring. He is viewed as kind of one of the fast risers in the business and a damn good football coach. And so uh, when you have as many bodies in that room as you do and you get people's and you have a guy transferring out, I view it like he was probably buried on that depth chart and he wants to go see if he can play somewhere else. And uh, I completely understand wanting to do that and you wish him nothing but the best uh, for the future. He played 30 snaps last year. Um, I'm oh, not, really? I'm not going to get too married to his high school recruiting rankings. I, I, y'all know me. That's just not something I'm going to do. And a lot of people, the headline's going to be LSU loses a top 120 recruit. Um, he's a freshman. He certainly could get better. Uh, there wasn't a lot of bend out there. Um, I watched him a, a I bunch in the A&M game. Uh, not the A&M game, the, uh, the bowl game against Wisconsin. He played uh, like one play literally against A&M. Like he can't, I remember him going in and then like coming out of the game. Uh, Grambling, I think, was the other game that he played in. Uh, he could get better, but this, this was a player that um, had very high aspirations, I think, coming in, and I think he got passed up by a couple of other guys in his class at the position. And so, Yeah, and I mean, and look, if you think people's a good coach, you trust his evaluation. Not to say that even that that's always right, because sometimes situation matters. Like, who's the guy that is, is it Landon Jackson that actually yeah. ended up being awesome for yeah, Arkansas. Arkansas? He's like all SEC. And well, like, we didn't think he was that good when he was here. Well, he looked pretty unathletic when he was here. Yeah, I, I got to give uh, actually Panamski credit for this one. When he was uh, a freshman at LSU, I do remember having that conversation with him. He's like, he's going to be really good. Oh, like he was still here, and he's like, he's going to be a really good player. Uh, you know, he's from the area. And I guess I, for whatever reason, I don't know why he goes back. And we all remember the viral video of him hitting the pads. It was so bad, right? Did not. But look I got to give Panamski credit because he's like, this is going to be a really good football player. And at the time, I'm like, well, I, I didn't see it. I didn't. I, I don't know because yeah. he was like on punt, <laughs> and that was it. So you're well, right. You, and he looked stiff. I mean, he didn't look. And, and now he's awesome. So shout out Landon Jackson, proving us wrong. Had a very good year. Last year. So maybe Howard goes on to do the same thing. But um, this is not like a break, make or break thing. Uh, all right. So Harold Perkins needs some quicker bites. Uh, but Harold Perkins meeting with the media. Here's what he thinks about his new role on this defense. I'm really liking the role they got me doing. A lot of stuff. More in the box, playing well. Being around everything. All right, right in the midst of it. I'm excited about it. Um, let's get into the, uh, well, actually, let's just go down the list because these are quicker bites. Uh, here's Perkins on what the key to success at play more in the box will be. Just trusting what you see, trusting your eyes, um, and just being a football player and not really thinking too much. I feel like that's something I'm really good at. Not really thinking too much, just going out there and playing. There's that theme that we keep getting back to, right? You have finite resources that you can allocate between the mental and the physical. Defensively, you don't want to be thinking, you want to be flying, and it's everything that Blake Baker's tried to instill here. Uh, here is Perkins speaking on the transition to Baker as the D.C. I love the transition. Um, I feel like Coach Baker knows how to relate to his players. Um, his scheme fits the, fits the defense. And I'm just excited to see where we're going to go. Uh, let's keep the Baker answers rolling. He's speaking on the more relaxed environment going down now. I feel like we have a lot of humor now. You know what I'm saying? Like everything not too serious. I feel like last year it was a lot, of, a lot serious on defense. This year, I won't say we relax, but you know, like we, we joke around a lot more, but we also get get that work in too. It's funny because everything you cannot help but view every answer as a veiled critique of how it was, right? How it was last year under Matt House, and uh, that answer especially is not that hard to understand because we all know when people feel threatened, right? Uh, when that fight or flight is kicking in because things are going so horribly awry. Uh, the tight b-hole can creep up on any of us. And all of a sudden, you can't be joking and laughing around because we're playing so bad, right? Whereas, like, you know, um, it probably got pretty miserable in those rooms last year. And I think that Mason Smith and Mekhi Wingo leaving would speak to that maybe more so than anything else. Yeah, and one of the things that you hear is, like, they didn't really have a voice in the room either. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yes, like the players. Yeah, yeah, weren't really able to speak up, and that's crucial, and I was with different coaches at LSU. It didn't matter running back coach, offensive coordinator. You were with different coaches. Like even the biggest hard ass coach would still let you have some input and you know let you talk in the room and share some ideas. And so that like that's not a good thing. The fact that it was only the coaches talking. Um, it's more on Baker here. Is Perkins talking about what it's like being coached by Blake Baker? 
I love being coached by Coach Baker. Like I said, he's not like, he got a humor. Everything not serious, but when it's time to get that work in, it's time to get that work in. And like, he real like precise, you know, he want things to go a certain way. And if we're not doing it right, he'll go out there, he'll show us how to do it. Instead of us just walking through it, he'll get out there and show us himself. Y'all be saying he got the cleats on and stuff. Oh, I, I didn't know that Baker was yeah. uh, part of the cleat mafia. Yeah. Harbor style. I mean, a former Tulane linebacker in his own right, right? Yeah, he was. Still in great shape. Yeah. The guy's still getting after it. Um, love when a coach uh, can like, get out if, there if and he's He's still my move. age. If he can go out there and still wear a cleat to not have back pain, good Hell for yeah, him. yeah, dude. Uh, also, well, you know, I mean, I don't think he has a, the NFL wear and tear on his body either like you do. But, um, yeah, it, and, and the humor thing I, I like as well because all, all I'm translating that is is that he actually gets along with the players. Yes. Because if we look at other answers throughout the offseason, everything has been about the kind of a high bar of demand that he has in terms of execution, in terms of how hard you're going to work and how you're going to fly around. And uh, here's Harold on whether or not the defense is buying in. I feel like collectively as a defense, we all motivated. I'm saying we got a lot of new faces around here. And everybody is like, we we not like we not like taking taking that in a bad way. We're buying into it, so I think that's a good thing. When you got all your players buying into it, tell you what you got going on, you got something going. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously that's critical, right? Uh, as as he says, it, when he says we got a lot of new faces, and that's not a bad thing. Um, it can go awry, right? You have to be so careful. It's what I worry most about uh, for Alabama right now is. The insidious, oh, this isn't how we used to do things, or this guy's not that. You know, that that, that kind of, it can it can happen with your upperclassmen, and it can yeah. have a trickle-down effect. Um, and it's not always back-breaking. Like, I mean, Jake, you could probably speak to this uh, better than anyone, the transition from Saban to Miles, where there was a lot of that, but everybody still kind of liked Miles, it seemed like, from talking to people, because it was a bit more relaxed and, and different, but there was still an element of like, mm, isn't that how we used to do things. Yeah, there was. Uh, certainly like in the off season in the weight room and, you know, preparing for a season. But it was like like you're saying, like you were going from Coach Saban who you were going to know exactly where he stood and things were not going to be easy and uh, it was going to be as hard as possible. And so there was like some relief <laughs> when you got something yeah. new. But also like when things weren't working, it's like, wait a minute, hold up. Like, we did it this other way for a long time, and it worked really, really well. Why are we moving away from this? I know for like the wait staff, like it was a transition for them, yeah, because they were used to doing it a certain way, and they were wondering, is this going to work? Are we going to be as calloused as we need to be because we're not doing the fourth quarter program like we once did? Um, it's uh, and well, and and speaking on Alabama, I read an article the other day, and apparently, like player leadership met after the changeover, and that was. The number one thing that they came to is that they they keep that they have to keep the fourth quarter drill. Yeah. So uh, definitely instilled in them. Um, again, it's different. It's a bit apples and oranges because you're going from a great coach, whereas at LSU you went from a bad coach. So of course the new regime may be more welcome, but it's still heartening to hear that people are buying in uh, sincerely, and there's not a lot of grumbling about uh, what was. No, only because what can it, be. last year, and I know we're up against the clock, but last year. It was it was incredibly bad. One of the worst defenses in the country, but yeah, worse than USC. It you know, wasn't that we make fun of them for. It wasn't a talent issue. Like there was some of that, but it wasn't the main reason. It yep. wasn't. We we saw the the same players like Makai Wingo be an All American the year before. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a talent issue. It, Not as much as it was coaching. It was a situation where T. Bob, we would turn on the tape and you would ask the question, "What in the hell is the defensive line doing right here?" And I would turn on the tape and I would say, "What in the hell coverage is it?" Like, yeah, that that can't happen, and it doesn't seem like it's happening right now. So, like, just that alone, you feel like you're going to go up a couple of notches, and then you've added some talent, and you're probably going not no, you're not probably you are going to add some more talent here when this spring portal window. Uh, officially opens and, and you bring in some players on the defensive front and maybe even somebody in the defensive backfield. All right, when we get back, let's wrap up hour one of OTB. Keep it locked. Off the bench with Hester and T Bob. Go to All Star Toyota Baton Rouge .com, All Star Toyota Baton Rouge .com. Uh, That's the website. You can also go see them off an of airline in Goodwood. I tell you every day, but uh, if you get an action, you need a body shop, service center, go check out All Star. Uh, all makes and models are welcome. Okay, it does not have to be a Toyota. And if you mention uh, T Bob, Jake, OTB, anything like that, you get $100 towards that deductible, guys. How about that? 
Um, great deals on new vehicle, Toyota certified used vehicles. You still get the next one warranty coverage. When your vehicle's being fixed, uh, they have a shuttle service. They'll drop you off and pick you back up. They got rental cars right there on site. Just hit a Miss Lisa Sessions. Uh, and again, you get a free professional estimate with excellent communication along the way. Also, to Baton Rouge, your one-stop vehicular shop. You can go buy new, you can lease, you can rent, you can do it all. And we tell you every single day, everything is available in that process. So the full fleet ready to go. Yes, even in the rental department. So call Miss Lisa Sessions today and get that reserved for your next vacation. Go to the website, allstartoyotofbatonrouge.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few... All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What's happening, y'all? Hey, guys, UFC 300 going down this weekend, and we have our own UFC beat reporter, Alondra <laughs> Villarreal, host of Bad Corner Advice, brand new Let's pod she just debuted, uh, recorded Tuesday night. Uh, you can find it on the, is it on the one, how, how do I it find it on the 104.5 ESPN feed? Yeah, it is on the feed, um, but it's called Bad Corner Advice if you want to look it up too. Yeah. But it is on our feed. So go the, check it out. Um, feed. What are you most looking forward to this weekend about UFC 300, Alondra? I think my fa- my favorite fight that I'm going to watch is probably Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway for the BMF. Max Holloway is moving up to 155 for that one. The last time he did it was against Dustin Poirier. And Poirier won that fight. But it was under, like, short notice. 
Yeah. So he has a lot more time to bulk up and get ready for that fight. So, but to me, I mean, he has a title right now. Justin Gaethje is the BMF. So uh, uh, I help me, help, I was about yeah. to say, help me out here. Uh, is the BMF, does that spin out of like wanting to give Nate Diaz a belt? Like how long has this been around? And it's not like, what is, how does the BMF belt exactly work? So like, do you get a shot at the title? If you're just viewed as one of the guys that could take the most damage pretty much instead of being like the, like number one contender because of wins and whatnot. Yeah. Well, they call Justin Gaethje the highlight because he is BMF like, but yeah, basically it's like, who's who's next up and uh, Max Holloway actually is the one that like challenged him so I don't know I like Max Holloway he's one of my favorites also but yeah. I just don't know about him versus Justin Gaethje at 155 but that's the one that I'm most excited about and everybody's saying that they're competing for the performance of the night bonus because they know Gaethje Holloway is going to be fight of the night yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah for sure um, but yeah, Oliveira versus. Um, well, that's so. That's another thing that the BMF is trying to encourage is like, like winning obviously matters more than anything. But yeah. like, put on a show. Yeah, put on a and show. And if you put on a show, then you'll get a shot at the BMF right. if you consistently put on a yeah. show. Yeah, makes so sense. He won it like when he fought Dustin Poirier and got him with that head kick knockout. So so it was. What about, uh, do you think that 300 is living up to the billing in terms of the overall card? I think so. I think the two ones that people don't like is the opening one, Bo Nickel and Cody Brundage, because they're, like, Bo Nickel's a newer fighter, and <laughs> he only Bo has, <laughs> yeah, hey, Bo Nickel. Hey, Bo. Cody Brundage is just Old not Nickel. good. That's an so, all-time country name matchup there, Cody Brundage and Bo Nickel. <laughs> yeah, and they're both really good wrestlers, so that'll be a good fight, I guess, um, but people are upset that that's the opening fight of the night because he has five professional fights under his oh, belt. Oh, look so, at him, dude. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the, the rest of it on and the co-main event is a, a women's fight. So I think people don't like that either. But the um, rest of it is going to be really good. Hell yeah. Uh, so if you want to hear Alondra's full thoughts on UFC 100, bad corner advice out now. And uh, maybe she'll give you some gambling plays. I did. I, I gave tomorrow. a five leg parlay on it. Oh, hell yeah. Nice. Uh, can we give it on air tomorrow as well, maybe? Yeah. Maybe so. Or I'm not going like to be here, but. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> right. Oh, never mind. All right. Hour two coming up next. Off the bench with Hester and T Bob. Agitant Baton Rouge, agitantbr.com, agitantbr.com. You want to take control of your comfort zone? You want Agitant. Okay. Get that service. To the highest degree. And that ain't just lip service, y'all. They walk the walk. Uh, go look at the online reviews. Thousands of Google reviews and a 4.9. Um, you've never experienced the attention to detail that you're going to get when you work with Agatim or the level of customer service. So, uh, again, or a whole home generator. You want one? Storm season on the horizon here. It's supposed to be a pretty active one. Make sure you protect your home, your family. Uh, Ag Tim give you a free estimate and install there as well. Ag Tim Baton Rouge, AgTimBR.com. Yeah, go to that website today. Go ahead and schedule that appointment today. And you're we're in that season where you don't want to shock the system. Always going up, down with the thermostat there. So have them come out and check it. Make sure everything's going the right direction. They can probably come out today. AgTimBR.com. There it is. The extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. Best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet.
The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $22,500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $22,500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Good morning. It's 8 a.m. on Thursday, April 11th. Today in Baton Rouge, you can expect partly cloudy skies with a high of 76. And hour two of today's show will be joined by LSU softball coach Beth Tarina at 8 a.m. Then a little bit later, baseball coach Jay Johnson stops by the show. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN. And watch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel. Hour number one. Hour number two of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios, starts now. Let we go! All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the, the Bench, bench with, with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo! What's happening, y'all? Welcome back. Hour number two of OTB here on this Thursday and every single Thursday at 8 a.m. We kick it off with the LSU softball head coach, Coach Beth Torino, one of our absolute favorites, fresh off another walk-off win, 7-5 over Southeastern last night, a game where these Tigers had to dig deep, rally a couple times, and Petty coming up with a walk-off home run. Her excellent hitting year continues. Uh... Coach Serena, what's going on? Uh, three extra inning games in a row. How are you sleeping? You, you feeling okay? How are the nerves? Well, it's not my birthday, but I am aging. I'm <laughs> aging rapidly here with this group. So, um, But last night was stressful and exciting and had all the feels mixed into it. And And so last night, so critical, I think, in terms of morale and uh, just the, the, what, what it does for the mentality – Given that Monday night, uh, we talked about it at the beginning of today's show and a bit, you know, on Tuesday when it happened. But um, Monday night had to feel like one of probably the low points that you've ever experienced in softball in terms of <laughs> that lead and how brutal, like the, the, how it went down. I mean, as, as we said, you can play that game a hundred times and it would never go like it did again. What was your message to the team to kind of? try to flush uh, that bitter disappointment? I mean, I, I told them exactly that. I'm like, if we play this game 100 times, we win 99 of them. You know, I just think um, things didn't go our way. We made some mistakes there at the end that were not typical of us. But, I mean, we're also playing at their home field. And, yeah. uh, you know, in Tiger Park, it feels different. We're the home team. It feels different. There's so many factors. Um, and I don't want to make excuses. But we're also playing a top-10 team. So, um, they don't give you any room to breathe or any room to make mistakes. They make you pay for them. 
Well, Coach, having a loss like that, heartbreaking loss in a game in which you, you felt like you should have come out on top, but to be able to come back and last night have that kind of game but still have the fight and focus and the determination to finish that thing, that does show a team that is still locked in. Yeah, I mean, the, the cool thing, what I told the team after the game is when Carly Petty was up to bat, like, there wasn't a person in our dugout um, anywhere involved with our program that didn't think she was going to have that moment. Like, everybody yeah. believed down to the last pitch, down to the last moment. Like, after the game ended, there were seven of our players who were like, I called it. I knew she was going to hit that. I knew that. Like, every single person believed that our team would find a way to win. And that, I think, shows you what this team's made of, is there's never a doubt. They're never out of a game. They don't care the score, the situation, the count, the outs. Like, they're never out of it. And that's what is the true makeup of the team. Well, and and what what else is uh, crazy to me, Coach, you mentioned three extra inning games in a row, now four and two in extras on the year. But it just feels like every game it, it, they are just these tooth and nail battles uh and and with some of the best teams in the entire country i mean close game after close game do you feel like your team when when you get into the seventh and maybe there's a deficit or a slight lead like do you feel do you feel like your team's pulse elevates or is it just kind of like ah we've been here before let's just do our work I just think they're really veteran and they understand how to be in a lot of different situations. So they don't panic, you know, mm -hmm. I and mean, they came from behind all three wins against Texas A&M. Yep. They're down to not just their last out, but their last strike in the middle game against Florida. And Raylene is able to get a hit right there to tie the ball game. I mean, I just think that they find ways to win. They're never out of it. Um, just that, like I said, that shows the makeup of this group of the special group that we have. Um, I also think too, that, I think right now we're playing the number seven strength of schedule in the country. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, and, and uh, Southeastern is a, almost a top 50 RPI team. So, they're talented. They're having a good year. I think we're playing good teams. So, I don't think you're going to run away with a lot of games. So, they're going to be ball games. So, we better figure out how to play them. All right. Uh, speaking of coming up on the schedule, you've got the Auburn Tigers and coming back to Tiger Park. Give us a little preview of what to expect from Auburn. Well, they have a really special pitcher on the mound. Um, and, and uh, Penta, she just can do so many things. She is one of the best in the league, one of the best in the country. Um, so we'll have to figure her out. We'll spend today at practice doing that. And, um, you know, of course, they bring a lot of other pieces and parts, but I would say she's the one that's kind of circled on your notebook of we've got to figure out Penta to get this thing done. If I'm not mistaken, just through a no-hitter in the – a combined no-hitter, but was part of a no-hitter, correct? I, I don't know that yet. <laughs> sorry, um, sorry if I broke that. <laughs> sorry, coach, I if I broke that office. news to you. <laughs> well, um, I already know she's good. You're not telling me anything. I don't know. She's really, really talented. Really talented. And and coach, um, this is so. I know that as a coach, uh, you you're going to give every single team your full focus, and uh, regardless of record right? Um, um, uh, try to approach things in the exact same way. But if your players just like look at the standings right now, this is kind of one of the rare times in which you're not facing a team that is like ranked in the top 10 or 15. They're three and nine in the SEC. So do you do any extra kind of messaging or anything along those lines? I mean, 21 and 12 overall, give you the strength of the conference, but do you need any sort of messaging to them about, um, hey, look, don't pay attention to that conference record. If you get complacent, you're going to get got. Yeah, I think they know that. I think they understand the SEC well enough. I mean, one of their SEC wins is Tennessee. You know, Tennessee is the top of the league. Yeah, so man. I think they understand that anyone can beat anyone. They've done this long enough to know that, that um, every team's good. And Auburn has spent the majority of the year in the top 25, you know, so um, they've just fallen out recently. But, I mean, everybody understands they're talented. Everybody understands they have one of the best arms in the country and they're capable of beating them. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm just sure with basically the entire conference being ranked most of the time, for you, Coach, that's probably not something that you have to go in and do very often just because regardless of what the number is next to their name, or even if they don't have one, like you just said, they've beaten Arkansas, they've beaten Tennessee. I'm sure that's a conversation that you don't have to have very often knowing the league you're playing in. I mean, the conversation that we have pretty much before every game, the same one we had last night, is the most important game on our schedule is the game we're about to play. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to treat every single team like that, no matter if it's on a Wednesday night or a Sunday in the SEC or whatever it is. Like, every game we play, that night is the most important game on the schedule. And I think you have to play it that way. 
Um, if you want to be a super regional host, if you want to do all the things this team wants to do, you have to treat every game that way. Um, Coach, I asked Coach Mulkey this this same question uh, earlier in the week when we talked to her. And you look at LSU baseball right now, kind of going through it a bit. Uh, when you have a team in which you feel like maybe you're falling short of expectation or or things haven't developed in the way that maybe you would have expected it to before the season, uh, what are your techniques that you rely on to kind of try to pull out of that? I mean, I, first of all, I think they're doing an incredible job, and I think they're fresh off a national championship, so we all need to keep that in perspective. It's yeah. a very long season. This no is more, of, this is more of a philosophical question, right? Like, I'm not asking you, I'm not asking, like, well, they need to do this or they need to do that. I'm just saying when you've been in this situation in your coaching career, I'm trying to gather information from different coaches so I can find, like, kind of common threads that some of the best at their jobs seem to be highlighting. That, that's all this is. I think it's I think it's cool this year's team that we have. It's one of the first times I haven't felt like our strategy has to be just incredible. Like, our team mm. is just that talented, right? But I think in other years, like, we've got to out-strategize people. We've got to maybe find a gimmick, find an angle, find a certain thing we're trying to do. And this year, we just have gotten to play LSU softball, which has been really cool. Um, you're not always going to match up that way. Like, we won't match up that way every game this year either, you know, where we don't have to have some kind of an angle or a gimmick or a strategy. But, um, you know, I think that kind of would be my thought is, like, trying to find a spot where you can convince your team, like, hey, if we attack them like this, mm. we're going to do it and make them confident through that. Um, coach, got to feel good to be getting back uh, here to Tiger Park. Uh, what do you think about the T-shirts from last week, though? Those <laughs> things were pretty fantastic. <laughs> I really had no idea. I had no idea. I mean, they all walked out, and I'm like, what are they wearing? But leave it to Quinn, the best ops in the country, to do that. So, uh, Coach, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but is Saturday a teal game against Auburn? It is teal. It nice. is teal. So if you are not signed up to come out and be with us, um, check out goteal.com, D-E-A-U-X, teal.com. Come out. The walk is at 10 a.m. on Saturday morning. Come support an amazing cause there um, and support all the women in our community that uh, have fought ovarian cancer and their families. Um, and then we will be wearing teal. The whole SEC will be dressed in teal on Saturday night. We'll have a pregame ceremony to honor survivors. But it's an awesome cause. It's an awesome day. One of my favorites of the whole year. I'd love to have everybody come out. And you can also walk right up and sign up as well. Uh, we'll continue to push that over the next couple of days as well. I apologize for not mentioning it off the uh, off the jump there. G-E-A-U-X-T-E-L dot com. Coach, uh, thank you so much for joining us, giving us your time every single week, and uh, best of luck uh, this weekend. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Yes, Coach. ma'am. Uh, Coach Beth Tarina, legend of the game. LSU currently fourth in the SEC right now. Top 10 team in the entire country. Fourth, fourth in the SEC, number six. In the country. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Um and uh, looking to take care of business against a an Auburn team that is probably better than their SEC record says, uh, but still, you know, uh, maybe relative to what your schedule looks like, an opportunity to gain a couple of games here. I was uh, I was looking at the standings yesterday. We were talking softball on off campus, and if you just and I know you can't do this because it's kind of disrespectful to the Big Twelve, but. If Texas and Oklahoma were already in the SEC, you would have the number one, two, four, five, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, nineteen, twenty-two, and twenty-five. Twenty-fifth ranked team in the country. And then, and then, like you said, Auburn's been ranked for the majority of the year. Auburn right now, uh, they're actually ranked in in one poll. Okay. Not yeah. not all four, but they're ranked in one poll. They come in at number twenty-two. So yeah, that's that's what that's what it is every single year. And you're adding the one and two, Texas is one, Oklahoma's two to your league next season. What it is, Bo? What's up? Um long time. I haven't either. Uh hmm. There's some stinky Kalen DeBoer stuff starting to float around. Text just got sent across my group on the Alabama text group. Uh, we'll look into it, maybe address it later in the show. And then, uh, coming up at 930, we got Coach Jay Johnson. Talking about 830, excuse me, 830. Here in a little bit, Coach Jay Johnson coming up here on Off the Bench.
Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. KTOZblinds.com, KTOZblinds.com. K to Z window coverings. Uh, you want window coverings? Oh, wow. You want K to Z hat Brandon Barton out of your home? Take advantage of the decades worth of experience. Uh, Brandon built this company with Sweckity, pounding the pavement, right? And now, through those 15, 20 years, um, the level of expertise and knowledge that he is bringing to bear is going to blow your socks off. So, whether it's a starter home or the home of your dreams, why not invest in your greatest asset and bring your home to the next level with K to Z? This could be. Um, Outdoor kind of light and heat management, um, a master bedroom, baby room, theater room, whatever, whatever. It's all there at K to Z. Yeah, for us, I mean, it can be light and heat management and then outdoor screen, but I mean, different versions, right? If you're trying to keep the bugs out, like they're going to know your space. That's the most important thing here. They're going to know exactly what you need. They're going to know it like in five minutes, okay? K2ZBlinds.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. teamed up to reimagine your parks and you imagined big with your help we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish a family-sized water park miles and miles of trails and parks just for your dogs there are more places to splash to explore to run wild and even soar you imagined we delivered gold Breck, your number one park system in the nation Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. The best kept secret. Now I ain't saying she a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke, broke. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Uh, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back to OTB. Um, so... 
yeah, God, yeah, maybe turn on the music because this is a little. This is not not the heaviest of topics, but it's it, it's certainly not um, the most pleasant of conversations. Talk about the Kaylin DeBoer stuff. Uh, this is starting to percolate right now, um, and we're not going to spend very long on this. I just want to kind of close the loop on what I talked about uh, going into break, so it's not just floating out there in the ether. But I guess uh, Tylen Rogers, who was a freshman running back for Washington last year. Um, was accused of uh, sexual assault and arrested in November. Uh, he did not play in the Pac-12 championship game. He did not travel with the team in the Pac-12 championship Jake, uh, game. Jake, he was suspended. And when asked about why he did not play and why he didn't travel, uh, DeBoer said he was dealing with some off-the-field challenges. And he did end up playing in both playoff games. Um, and he's still on the team. And I guess some of this started to come to light in a more public sense here recently. Jed Fish was asked about it, and Rogers has actually now been suspended, uh, I believe, from the team indefinitely as um, they figure out what's going on here. So basically uh, now DeBoer is having to answer questions about, okay, it looks like through your actions and suspending him for the Pac-12 championship game that you knew about this, but then you allowed him to play in uh, both the playoff and the national championship game. What changed? And both him and Ryan Grubb are being singled out uh, specifically as well. Why? And, and, and look, DeBorg declined to comment um, from the piece that I was reading from uh, a news station out of Washington, whereas Ryan Grubb said he wasn't comfortable on uh, speaking on these situations. So, I, I mean, I don't want to speak on it too much as well. I'm just keeping you up to date. That is the story that is currently percolating around Kalen DeBoer. And so eventually he's going to have to, um, eventually he's going to have to, I guess, address this. Uh, but, yeah, this uh, is, yeah, it's first time I'm, I'm hearing of it as well. And um, it, it's something, I mean. Yeah, I mean, it may, maybe it is, maybe it is. I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what's this going to play out, but I don't think he'll be able to just not answer anything about this, but, but I don't know, maybe. Maybe so. It's um, I, I mean, these are the type of stories though that are just the ugly parts about sports. Like this, this feels just bad to talk about in general. But that is what is going on right now uh, with DeBoer. If you start to see those headlines and those conversations start to take place, you now know um what they are about. Uh, we'll attempt the impossible transition here. Um, uh, maybe a little uh, maybe a little. Ad read to break it up, a little rejuve me medical, uh, restore me, refuel me, rejuve me. You want to feel uh, better, younger, stronger, faster, um, fight the untreated effects of aging, which could be like andropause, menopause, facial aging, you get in that mood and memory problems, uh, you, insomnia, you can't sleep, you don't have the energy waking up like you used to, you don't have the energy rolling into bed like you used to, uh, rejuve me medical is there for you no matter what. And, 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 and look, you do upkeep, I tell you all the time, but like, you do upkeep on your, <laughs> you do upkeep on your um your home, your computer, your vehicle, all this sort of stuff. Why not on your body as well, dude? You know? And maybe it's like HRT, hormone place therapy. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's a glutide. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's B vitamin shots. You get that free consultation, get your labs drawn, and let that be the guide to putting together a custom plan for you. Uh Shreveport, Baton Rouge, Metairie, Slidell, and Monroe. Now, as well, rejuvemedical.com, rejuvemedical.com. Uh, so, big weekend coming up. Uh, did you all see any of the John Calipari stuff from yesterday, Jake? Now uh, I yeah. am yes. becometh Calipigli, caller of hogs. Uh, do you all have these? Uh, it, it, Taylor, looking at 30, I'm going to need these videos with sound here. Let me know when you're ready to go. I can fill time for you by asking a very simple question. Is Calipari the basketball Jimbo? Mike Farrell Sports is where I uh, originally saw this take, and it one that bears a little food for thought here, Jake, right? Um, both Calipari and Jimbo Fisher, incredible recruiters, obviously. Um, both won a national championship and had great success. Uh, Jimbo of Florida State, Calipari obviously at Kentucky, have these traditional powers. Both leaving the powers on kind of a consistent decline when they take another big money job from a school that is trying to reach heights that it's never reached before in Arkansas and Texas A&M. Now, to be fair, 
Uh, well, actually, how, how would you answer this? Did Calipari leave Kentucky in a better spot than Jimbo left Florida State? Yes. Because Florida State was a disaster. Yes. But, 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 but what I'm getting at here is our five years in a row of not making the Sweet 16, is that actually equivalent to going five and six your last year in Tallahassee? No, I don't think so. Okay. I, don't, I don't really know that I love the comp because what Coach Cal did at UMass, like they went to Final Fours, Elite Eight, Sweet 16s. What he did at Memphis, they were runner-up. Uh, they went to multiple Elite Eights. They went to Sweet 16s. Uh, Kentucky won a national championship, and so – I think more success than Jimbo had. Like Jimbo had a national championship at Florida State, but I mean, look, Coach Cal's shown that he can do it at three different spots. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a little bit different there. Yeah, that's probably fair. Um, but there, are, there are some still some surface level. Hey, I mean, look to be clear, I don't think my answer would be no. Like I think Cal Parry is going to be a bit rejuvenated by going to Arkansas. I think he's going to he's going to have a ton of money behind him because of the excitement that he's created and and, and his relationship with Juracek and. Uh, Tyson appears to be very strong. And to know, I expect Cal Part to have success at Arkansas, but I do find these similarities to be kind of uh, intriguing. I mean, maybe like for him to leave Kentucky, like is shocking. Maybe you can compare that to Jimbo when he leaves Florida State to go to A&M, but their resumes, I think, are, are different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, would, I, think, I think you're right on that. Cal Part has a stronger overall resume, certainly, objectively. Um... I'm trying to think of coaches that like won, like won national championships. He won. I mean, they had some nice bowl wins too, though, didn't they? They had one against North Carolina in the COVID year. I thought they um, at A and M. You talking about? No, no, sorry. I'm talking oh, about. I'm talking about Florida State. Yeah, they made they like, made it back they, they, to the EJ CFP, Manuel but they got run. They, had the, they had the CFP. I mean, outside of Jameis, even they had some success. It was just all yeah. downhill post Jameis yeah. in a lot of ways. Uh, okay, before we get to Cal calling the hogs in that press conference, uh, here he was asked about his kind of first few days on the job, and he had a very funny sound bite that kind of shows what it's like taking over a, a program as a coach nowadays. I'm jacked about another opportunity. Like, I'm like, let's go. Now, I met with the team. There is no team. So now I got to... Hunter's really extremely confident, but we got to get a roster together. And some of it is a little bit of everything, but we will. It may take a little longer because there are kids that put their name in the NBA draft that are going to go through. And you know what? I'm Some real uh, get on the scale, get off the scale. Yeah. Uh, I met with a team. There is no team, uh, which is just, you know, that's par for the course nowadays. Also, no, I, I kind of smooth, subtle plea to be like, hey, guys, you know, we're going to need some money. You got to get this team together, dude. Yeah. I mean, the, the Tyson Chicken guy got a standing O at the press conference. Hell so. yeah, dude. Uh, here is Cal's first experience with the Hills Have Eyes tradition that is the calling of the hogs. Let's stand up and call those hogs. It just, I always, I mean, you see something like that and you can't help but imagine a thousand years into the future and uh, whatever society exists at the point, that's like the lone scrap of evidence that they have about the 2020s. And they're like, they, they, they appear to worship some sort of feral pig hmm. um, and, and, and an ancient chant and tradition in which it's, it's I, I don't know what it is. I make fun of a and I love calling the hogs. That's not, that's not half as cringe as like midnight yell practice in the yell. I league. love calling the It's Hawks, not even so. close. It's so weird. It's what makes college football so yeah, great. Yeah, I agree with Taylor, though. I don't think it's even close to A&M's like oddness of doing the, you know, all the, not that and, and them trying to be funny and it bombing every time. That just seems like some good old rednecks having some fun. Well, we looked it up. Which is a term of endearment. We looked it up. That the was the origin. So the legend of calling the Hogs goes back to the 1920s. 
a bunch of people watching the Arkansas football team, and apparently they were looking pretty listless, and a bunch of the farmers in the stands started calling the hogs. Next thing you know, the football team wakes up, and they just start doing it. So a great agricultural origin of the uh, tradition there, which I certainly appreciate. Shout out Coach Caldo. I think he's going to be good. All right. Uh, yeah, he's going to have a team. I think yeah. he'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think he's going to be just fine. Of the six guys at Kentucky that he had signed or committed to him that were top 100 players, I bet he gets a few of those fellas. Yeah, and weren't you talking about somebody who's already decommitted yesterday, Taylor? Was that you? Yeah. Or was that somebody else talking to me about that? I don't know. Um, all right, when we get back, let's talk to Coach Jay Johnson here on Off the Bench. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. CentralPlumbing.org, CentralPlumbing.org, 925-8552, 925-8552. CentralPlumbing.org is the website. That's the phone number. Uh, and every one-stop plumbing shop with over 50 years of experience, licensed bonded and insured employees, and 24-7 emergency service, plus flat rate pricing, okay? Uh, I always tell you this, but, you know, none of that food delivery app crap. Right at the end of checkout, suddenly your price doubles. Okay, you know exactly what you're getting into with Central Plumbing. 925-8552, centralplumbing.org. Go there today. $46 of groceries. Hit confirm. $89 worth of mm. groceries. Yeah, you don't get that. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> None of that with Central Plumbing. Go to that website and check it out. You can also pick up the phone, give them a call, and just talk it through with them. Let them know what you're looking for. If you're looking to upgrade at your home or business, they'll tell you there's not going to be a job too big for them. They can handle it. The fleet is ready to go 225-925-8552 and always online at centralplumbing.org. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the jimsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the jimsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Secret in Town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents.
All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to OTB. Every single Thursday, we are lucky enough to be joined by LSU head baseball coach Jay Johnson. Cuts out time of his busy schedule. Got a trip looming to Tennessee, and yet he spends his time with us here every single week. Coach, what's going on? Fresh off a nice midweek win. Uh, turns out you managed to get three home runs from the leadoff hitter, Coach. It's not a bad recipe for success. Yeah, I like that. Sign me up for that. And uh, I'm good with going uh, defensive tackle in the leadoff spot. Uh, um uh, okay, coach. So let's 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 get into uh, let's get into everything here because going into last weekend, um, we kind of asked, okay, when when things are starting to go awry a bit, what's your message to the team? And you and, and you talked about, okay, let's narrow the focus. Uh, this game, this at bat, this pitch, and just live there and kind of let the results fall where they may. And again, a bit of a heartbreaker in game two here. And and, and I wonder like. As that continues, is that messaging still the same? Do you evolve it? Do you change it in any way? Or is it still, look, all we can do is focus everything we have on the present? Yeah, I always believe in that. I believe in that whether, you know, we're in the College World Series, you know, last year playing as well as you possibly could, or you're in a tough stretch. I think uh, that's key. You know, you mentioned Friday night's game. You know, I've, I've been doing this a long time. And uh, that was about as tough a loss yeah. as I can remember. You know, it was very reminiscent to the Florida deal because if you just flip those two games and two or three of those pitches, we're in an entirely different situation right now. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we got blasted on Saturday. I, I would give you the third game of this one. Um, we, we got beat. Like, I mean, you, you got to give Vanderbilt some credit. You know, we, we've run into a little bit of tough luck where – you know, Florida is throwing Caglione on Sunday, uh, Vanderbilt, Carter Holton on the, the game three. And that's two of the three best pitchers in the league. And, you know, after a tough loss like that, that's been a tough ask. Um, this week, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily changing it, but like it's it's more of like moving on. You know, for, for me, it is difficult, you know, to, to let go of, of games like, the Vanderbilt game or that Florida yeah. game. Um, but like for our players, for all of us in the organization, it's kind of like for these last 18 league games for, you know, non-conference game, it's like, what's next? And, you know, let's, let's attack that. And they did a good job of that on Tuesday. And um, we're going to have to do that this weekend. So really focusing on, you know, the present game, you know, as we did the same, and then what's next? Like, like, just be excited about what's what's in front of us. And I'm I'm really excited about this weekend. You know, I think, you know, it's not you know necessarily tangible to see you know with where we are in, in the league standings, but I do think there's some things that are evolving in a positive way, and we just need a little bit more. Like, I mean, it's not this. I know we got ten run a couple times, but. It's not just those games and some of the other ones. We just need a little bit more and, you know, we can put ourselves in a good spot. And so what's next? And that's uh, Tennessee this weekend. Yeah, Coach, how much of that conversation do you have? Because you're exactly right. I mean, the last couple of series, you look at Florida, Vanderbilt. I mean, you're, you're a pitch away from winning those series. And so it's not like it's crazy far off. And those are two really good baseball teams. And so, like, is that a conversation that you – continuously have with your team like hey it's not as bad as it seems right now we are making plays to win games we just got to make the play to finish it yeah for sure and you can look at a couple things in in those couple losses and you know I certainly do you know anything I can do as the coach uh to help us put us over the top and you know with the players it's, it's just being a little bit better and you know Again, I get it. It's the SEC. Everybody's got a tough schedule. I'd, I'd really like historically to look back and see if anybody's played four top six teams in a row. You yeah. know what I mean? In, yeah. in the conference schedule. And I get it. That's what we're supposed to be, too. And that's what I came here to do. And that's what we've been, you know, I mean, for a year and a half, you know, before this, this stretch. Um, you know, so we just got to hang in there and, and gain value out of these things. And, you know, I'm excited about 
some adjustments we're making, you know, with the pitching staff in terms of how we're going to use guys. I'm excited about, you know, some new faces moving into the mix. I'm excited about um, some improvement from the position player standpoint. And, you know, I mean, the offensive thing, like, I mean, Grayson Carter last Thursday night throwing 100 miles an hour, you know, we, we scored 10 runs. Yeah. And then, you know, we, we withstood, you know, Bryce Cunningham, who's going to be a first round pick and got him out of the game before the end of the fifth inning. And, and I believe if you score six runs at home against a pitcher of that caliber, you have to win that game. Yeah. Like I would love to score eight, but if you score six against a first round pick at home, you have to win that game. Uh, talking to LSU head baseball coach Jay Johnson here on OTB and uh, coach looking forward to Tennessee this weekend in Knoxville, Lindsey Nason, uh, Lindsey Nelson, a bit of a, a smaller park, right? A lot of offense within those walls. And it looks like the offense is going to have to show up this weekend. Uh, Cause if you just look at Tennessee's conference only stats um, offensively, it's pretty overwhelming. And so when you kind of look at your own staff then, and as you said, some of the changes you're trying to make, trying to figure out, okay, how do we, how do we kind of unlock some of these guys that we know are better than what we're seeing currently? Uh, how do you game plan it from a pitching perspective when you would appear on paper to be at a, at, at a disadvantage? Yeah. Well, first off, you know, to the opponent, you know, I watched their last, well, not their last four, but I watched four conference games last night. I watched the series against Auburn and one of the games against Georgia, which was the week before. And th- they're good. Like, it, it's, yeah. it's names, like, th- they were all there last year. So, I mean, yeah. there's a college World Series team that, that we played and, and was able to beat four times, but it's not really a surprise. Like, you know, Kavarius Tears, you know, had a pinch hit and they made the last out of, of, of the game in the second game. We beat them in Omaha. I mean, he drove a ball to the fence the other way. Josh Pearson made a nice catch on. It's like, man, that guy's going to be really good. And they are really good. I mean, they're really balanced. They hit mistake pitches. Um, you mentioned the ballpark. Like, it, it's a good challenge. And th- there's a path, like, to get them out. But our pitchers have to be better than they have been. And um, I do think we're moving in that direction. I know that's, that's crazy to say. Um, but, you know, with, with Luke, Luke's been solid. You know, with Gage, again, like, I still really believe in him. He'd only thrown 14 college innings before showing up here. Yeah. And then you, you throw this schedule into it. Like, he's, he's gone through some learning. He's had a great week of prep. So I'm really excited about getting Gage out there. Uh, I thought the guys threw the ball extremely well on Tuesday night. And, you know, we'll probably carry another pitcher or two to navigate ourselves through that. You know, so you may see some weird stuff like, Gidry in the infield or Kate Anderson in the outfield, oh, you wow. know, because we're going to go with a heavy pitching staff, um, you know, this weekend to try to try to help us. And it's a good opportunity. I mean, it's a team, I think they've only lost four or five games. And so if you win or one or two on a road, you know, that's, that's massive value in terms of where we want to be. Coach, actually, my next question was going to be, we saw some changes in the lineup there in the midweek, and you just mentioned maybe a couple of things that you'll do this weekend, like when you have those kind of conversations and you're trying to figure out maybe how you get out of this small rut, like what goes into those conversations? Is it a, a week long conversation, 10 days, or is it something like, Hey, yesterday, Hey, we, we got to do something different. We're going to do something a little well, bit different here. Yeah. It's kind of, I kind of made a joke about it Tuesday night. Like, I know mean, I didn't put the lineup up till an hour and 15 minutes before the game. Yeah. Just from, Hey man, we, we got to get this right. Like right. there, there's no margin for error. And, you know, when you have a little inconsistency in performance, like that's kind of what makes it hard. Now our guys are trying really hard and, and working. And I, I think offensively there's, there's a few more things like we're going to be able to hang our hat on going forward. I think some guys are developing, um, but it, it comes down to those, those one or two at bats to be able to push the lead. Like we had first and third one out, we were up five to four. Um, in that game on Friday night, yeah. and you know we yeah. hit a ground ball to the first baseman. Oof. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, in a, in frankly, what should have been a good hitter pitcher matchup at the time. Um, and so those types of things, um, you know, it's just understanding that, and you know, being able to slow down in that moment and focus on what you need to do to execute. 
but they're putting a lot of effort towards it. I'm giving them a little bit different blueprint to, to what we're going to try to do here moving forward. And, you know, it's a little bit, it's, it's, I don't, it may be a little risky, but it's like we, we're selling out to, to go for it. Not that they haven't been, but it's like we're, we're going to put all hands on deck, um, you know, live by the sword, die by the sword, uh, try to help our pitching staff navigate through the challenges, you said, of that Tennessee lineup, small ballpark. And uh, I'm excited about it. And, um, you know, when you get to a point sometimes where there's nothing to lose, like that, that can be a really good thing. Uh, Coach, uh, last one for me here, uh, and it has to do with uh, Nate Ackenhausen, where, you know, at the two biggest kind of inflection points of the season, um, he's been at the the, the center of both, right, where he gets the big K against Florida and ends up, um, you know, kind of getting lost in the shuffle next thing you know, and he extends. Uh, And then the other night, just four outs away, kind of looks like he's cruising, and then the big two run home run. What is your, cause, cause I still think Ackenhausen has a huge role to play, obviously. Right. Uh, like what, what's your message to him to help him to, to, to maintain that confidence? Yeah, that's a good question. And, and trust me, nobody's wearing it harder than Nate. And, yeah. um, uh, I love, I love Nate. I mean, we have a national championship because of Nate. Yeah. Uh, he was one of the more underrated pieces of that team last year. You know, he had so many good outings and, you know, frankly, um, you know, I will take responsibility for it because I trust him so much. And, you know, there, there's some other things like that people don't see, like we've had to bring him in too early in both of those games yeah, and yeah. that's caused a point. problem. And, you know, it's like sometimes you got to close the game in the seventh inning. And, you know, if, if we got a little more, extension out of a couple relievers before they came in before he came in it would have shortened what he had to do but we got caught in matchup deals like we can't even get to the eighth or ninth inning unless we do this like yeah. right now and then it left us a little bit shorthanded i mean i could think uh, ty evans hit a double you know when we we're up four to two in the eighth inning had we got ty evans out we would have been able to hold date off for a little bit longer you know and then uh we gave up a leadoff hit you know, in the seventh inning and we had to bring him in and we stranded the guy on third to keep the lead. Yeah. Well, if you can wait an inning, it's a little bit different ask out of him. So it's not just him. It's everybody executing at a better level. And uh, that's what we need. And that's why we're making some adjustments with kind of who we're going to give the ball to, to again, try to not ask anybody to do too much. Now, Saturday's game, that was kind of the plan going in and, and nobody really did, did their job. You know, like we, they got hammered. So, um, we'll, we'll have to, we'll have to just keep going. So we get that right combination to, to win two games out of three against these, you know, teams that we're, we're playing and just get to the, get to the point where, um, we have it lined up correctly. Yeah. And, uh, like we talked about earlier this week, I ain't going nowhere, you know, and I'm pumped to continue to watch this team and to see who's going to fight who has the balls to continue to fight and scrap every single weekend, no matter how adverse the situation may get. So I uh, can't wait for this weekend, Coach. Best of luck. And as always, a a, a massive thank you for uh, for, for, for coming on and, and giving us like such sincere, thoughtful answers and your time. Thank you. Yeah, and I appreciate what you just said about that. And I think that's something that makes LSU cool. And, and I said this before, like what you just asked of, you know, the team, like, that's something like I'm always comfortable being held accountable for because that's, that's the ground floor. You know, we obviously got to do everything better to win, but, but I appreciate that. And out of me and and our team, I believe you'll continue to get that. Coach Jay Johnson, legend of the game, going to Lindsey Nelson this weekend, going to be another exciting SEC matchup. Uh, Coach, take it easy and uh, best of luck again. All right, guys. Have a great day. Thanks, Coach. All right. Uh, yeah, man. Who's going to fight? That's all we want to see. Okay? Like, I'm not even being results-based here. Again, um, like, I kind of like – you w- would have liked to see, uh, uh, like, more of it last Friday, like he's kind of alluding to there. But there was still a lot of good fight in that game. I, I, I can take that. I can take that yeah, even that if it's been a court. loss this yeah. weekend. You, yes. You counterpunched a ton in that game. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully you can, you know, stop them from just running the bases like freely, however they want, uh, once they get on first, but yes, 
Um, <laughs> that was one that was like, can we do that? Wait, <laughs> I know it's like, like are Vanderbilt, we fast? Vanderbilt kind of made it look so easy. Like, oh yeah, you just get a man on first, yeah, and then he just yeah, goes yeah. to second, and then yeah. if he wants, he maybe ends up taking <laughs> third. Uh, like, huh? Um, oh, like so, so also, chat, some... bro. The 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 J comments in the chat today, and I think people are trolling, right? And and look, but I'm not on tiger droppings, and so I don't quite know. But they are so out of pocket and absurd. Um. If you are out on the Jay Johnson train or Jay Johnson bandwagon, I think you are, quite frankly, an idiot. <laughs> uh, and I think you are the same people that said good riddance to Nick Saban when he left for Miami and then said we don't want him back uh, when he reportedly wanted to come back. So, no, I, th- I, th- I think you're being so prisoner of the moment and and it, it's just the dumbest it, I, I think these are the dumbest takes if you're being sincere about them i think a lot of it's trolling but if you're being sincere i think you're an idiot uh yes absolutely a hundred percent how could you listen to that man speak and not think that he's got a plan in place and like yeah. ready to go and yeah there's adversity right now when he's but, human, you know, I mean, like, like nookie says everything jay touched turned to gold the first two seasons this year's proven he's human as well he'll figure it out like yeah i mean you listen to the broadcast. Sometimes you need a national voice because we're so close to it. And so you listen to guys like Tom Hart and everything talking, and you hear, oh, yeah, wait, they actually replaced the entire lineup. Like like the entire field in terms of who's playing where is different this year, save for what, Tommy White at third? Um, you lose, obviously, the premier talents of Cruz and Skeens, but it goes deeper than that. You replace your entire coaching staff, and then you start with this first four series – um, like it's, it's, it's like you lose Ty Floyd as well. Like that's yes. another name that nobody talks about. The guy struck out 17 Florida Gators in the college world series. It's like, we're only, we're only like, um, we're only judging him so hard because they had proven to be so above expectation up to this point. Right. And so because when you just always made it work, no matter what, then all of a sudden it, this feels so different that it's like, oh, man, what's what's going on? But no, I will always bet on uh, on 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 Jay Johnson. And uh, I would say do not bail for sure. Um, all right. When we get back, uh, let's go ahead and close out our two. It's going to be a quick one. Sorry, I wanted to go long there with Jay. More to be coming up next. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. It's on me. It's on me. It's on me. Bad clock management. We gotta get Jay, man. You know what I'm saying? Coleman Roof. Coleman Roof and go to ColemanRoof.com uh, today. You want the most reliable, the most respected, the most complete roofing company in Louisiana. You want Coleman Roof. Uh, any size job, commercial, residential, anywhere in the Gulf South region, any type of roof, and the interiors as well. That's right, guys. The interiors as well. So, like, you get water damage during some of these rainstorms or something, or during the storms yesterday. Uh, not only do they fix the roof, but they also fix the uh, your drywall, your your insulation, whatever. Here's from uh, Nidia Garner, a uh, five-star review. From start to finish, my experience at Coleman Roof was top tier. The office staff was helpful, and the on-site manager ensured everything went smoothly. The new roof looked splendid, and they left no mess behind. Go to ColemanRoof.com to see more reviews like that. Also, go to ColemanRoof.com to find the contact information for your area in Louisiana. They service the entire state, commercial and residential. ColemanRoof.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. 
Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What's happening, y'all? Welcome back. Oh, TV. Only got a minute here. Then we get back. We got a little big deal or no big deal. Then we got Munchies with Chef Michael Johnson coming up at 9 15. Get to send me old comments here. Uh, Bobo saying, I'm 99% trolling. Talking about Jay. I think the whole Selvin thing, though, is 1 million percent a boomer move. That won't change anything. Um, I, I, maybe I'm becoming a boomer. Yeah, because I, maybe I'm a boomer because I disagree with that. Yeah, I like the cell phone move. Yeah. And, and I, if, if you listen to, which, why would you, right? I listen to all the post game interviews, but I loved hearing him talk about how the relationships of the players have actually improved post cell phone because all of a sudden guys are hanging out and like playing cards where and you're not everybody's not just kind of falling back into their own algorithm. And I mean, I feel like I see that with my kids. You give them screen time and it's like you give a moose a muffin, right? Uh, it's it's such a weird, delicate balancing act that you got to try to figure out. Moose, a muffin. Mouse, a cookie. Yep. Give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Uh, go to Pinnacle Exterior Construction. The website is pecbuilt.com. The company is Pinnacle Exterior Construction. And, um, well, as you can probably infer, uh, any exterior construction, they got you. Okay? So, like, fences, bulkheads, burglars, outdoor kitchens, anything like that, the gallery will blow you away but i want to talk to you specifically about the pools uh and the spec pools that you can choose where they got finance options available or you can just pay for it all at one fell swoop uh but you choose from a number of templates you choose a bunch of detail work you make it your own and then in just two weeks guys two weeks you have a pool so beat the heat this summer with pecbuilt.com and you'll be blown away i mean truly like so fast in and out you'll you'll wonder like what happened that like that's how i was when it was two doors down for me it's like no nothing like happened they just finished they finished the pool in two weeks and that is not just lip service it will get it done pecbuilt.com he's here anyone want a Coors Light oh shoot I forgot to play the song I got a guy who can fix this the Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. 
They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Good morning. It's 9 a.m. here on Monday, Thursday, April 11th. Today in Baton Rouge, you can expect partly cloudy skies with a high of 76 in hour three of today's show. We'll do some big deal or no big deal and our munchie segment with LSU chef Michael Johnson. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN and watch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel. Hour number three of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios, starts now. Ready, we go! All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the, the Bench, bench with, with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what happened, y'all? Welcome back. Go, T-B! T-Bob, Jake, Alondra, Taylor, hanging out with you today. Should have called Taylor by the wrong name after that gaffe. Monday. Of They're all days yesterday. Day. We are so far Monday. removed from Monday. It's like it ain't Monday, got a case of the Monday. Ooh. Hey, be happy that I was wrong in the other direction and be like, no. oh, it's Friday. Oh, it's only Thursday. Like, huh. could have been we worse. Are, are we closer to Monday than we're not, though? What do you mean? I guess that's a good point. Well, but because I don't we're know. like, so are, if we go we're back, we're, we're far. Yes, but if we go, if we go forward, forward we're, we're close. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a circular conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we going yeah. clockwise or counterclockwise? I think we're going clockwise. Clockwise, though. we're closer so, to Monday than not, that's unfortunately. True. Yeah. Uh, but between then and now, we have the beautiful, verdant, verdant, fertile a lands oh. that are the week. Wow. What? Um... I don't think I was about to call you yeah, verdant bad. and fertile on air. I think that's 
really probably getting into I didn't know that's where you were going. It's like when I called you an uncultured swine in the uh, group chat the other day, and you hit me with quite a nice little uh, comeback that I had to tip of the cap to you and abandon uh, said attack. Yeah. Um, he called me fat. No, no, I did not know. Uncultured swine is just an old saying. I would never. Uh, uncultured gazelle <laughs> is what I uh, what I meant to say. Whatever. Let's just make fun of Taylor. We don't yeah, need to be at odds with another. He's the one that said Monday. Monday. Yeah. Dummy. I know. Freaking so dumb. Um, freaking so dumb. <laughs> it's, it's dumb. <laughs> There's been some dumb things on the uh, show. No, guys. I, I just said uncultured swine. It's a saying. Idiot. That's a saying that's existed for a long time, okay? So your response to her when she said, are you calling me fat? You should have said, I just threw out uncultured swine. You came up with that opinion on your own. I Look, man. Whatever I think, happened to fat being a term of endearment? Pretty hot and tempting. Uh, yeah. Well, she didn't spell it. She didn't, she didn't spell, spell it like that. It, yeah. She didn't spell it. Yeah. You got to spell it. We were texting, so, right? So that would yeah. spelling does I didn't matter. See it, so okay. At uh, at that point, but uh, no, Taylor. I figured the the best thing to do at that point was to just abort, <laughs> uh, abort the attack. Uh, like like a like a fighter pilot pulling out of a dive, live to fight uh, another day. All right, let's do a little big deal or no big deal. Big deal. No big deal. Big deal. No big deal. Big deal. No 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 big deal. It's a big deal. Daniel Vash says, thinks he's hot stuff because he has that cool chest shirt on. I mean, are you serious, boys? Look at this chest.com shirt. It's so comfortable. It's so cool. I didn't even notice it's it It's got today. a little green logo, a little green lo- chest.com logo. Yeah. That's what's up. You right, though. Um... All right, big deal or no big deal? Terrell Suggs uh, was in a Starbucks, and I don't know what originally happened, but some man decided to swear at Terrell Suggs. Bold strategy, if you ask me, swear to T-Sizzle. And it would prove to be bold, as Terrell Suggs would then challenge him to a fight, call him some names, and pull out a gun and threaten to kill him. Uh, which led to T-Sizzle being arrested. Uh, Big deal or no big deal? Terrell Suggs pulling out a gun in Starbucks. No biggie. Uh, That's a big deal. (laughs) Taylor (laughs) explained why this morning. Yeah, we'll get into it after Jake. It it is a big deal as someone who has played against Terrell Suggs at least four or five times. I don't remember the exact number. Um, He's why you don't He would say some things and do some things on the field that Weren't normal. I'll just leave it at that. And so, for that reason, knowing him a little bit like I do, I, I'd say it's a big deal. Big deal. Um, Can't be pulling guns on people in Starbucks. Yeah, the, the the Starbucks element of it is the wildest part, right? Like that's, I there are places I expect. Okay, maybe a gun's in play here. Maybe a gun's in play to get pulled on me here. Um, Starbucks, not not the case. This also does reinforce, like, this is why I just don't get into really any confrontation at all anymore, ever. Just, just, just don't. So I'm going the opposite, no big deal, because it happened at a Starbucks, and I'll explain why. First off, when you're in line for coffee, you're cranky because you haven't had your coffee yeah, yet. You're Starbucks drug line's always out the door, so you're pissed off that you have to wait in line. True. Starbucks, a naturally hectic place. They're yelling out orders left and right, and you can barely hear them over the blenders and everything, there's already a lot of pent-up frustration. So because it happened at a Starbucks, I'm not actually that surprised. No big deal. Yeah, maybe it is actually some more ripe uh, grounds for this sort of behavior that I'm giving you credit for, given that, to your point, you have a bunch of drug addicts waiting in line to get their fix. Well, see, like, when I stand in line for Starbucks, it's not even for me, so I don't drink coffee. I feel Terrell Suggs. Like, I have a lot of pent-up anger every time I step inside of a Starbucks. Just order ahead, mobile order, and pick it up. Yeah, that's what I do. Starbucks app? Yes. I know that. Yeah, I, that, the fact that you could have a thousand free coffees right now and you don't take advantage well, of it makes me angry. Look, I haven't even been going to the Bucks lately. You know, volume's out the window now. Your boy's trying to save some money. I've been making my own cold brew concentrate again. Um, but it does lead to me. And then you had work coffee yesterday that made you belch. Uh, God, I just hate that. I, I've gotten to the I'm just such a little sensitive loser. I drink pot coffee at work and I just get heartburn. I just feel well, awful. To be fair, that coffee down there, I think it's the machine. It's horrible. Think, that machine ain't never been clean. There ain't Ever. no way. Uh, it tastes like a burnt sock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really does, doesn't it? It does. It's um, 
I mean, to be fair, I don't carry a gun, but if I did, <laughs> you shouldn't say that. There are you a couple of that. there are a couple of times that I may have pulled it watching someone order a drink that takes five minutes to explain how they want it in front of me in the drive That's what ride. I'm saying, yeah. T-Bob. Like, if I'm, I'm like, ever pulling a gun on someone. Just get some caffeinated bean juice and roll the hell on, dude. Bruh. I'm with Suggs on this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm with, yeah, we stand with T-Sizzle. <laughs> I, okay. I mean, if you're ever to pull a gun on someone, like, why not a Starbucks? Uh, it's a stressful I thought environment. This was America. Again, if you mobile order, you don't have to worry about that. I get that, you get to put but all your specialties in the mobile order. Yeah, a lot of times, for you. a lot of times they got like a thousand different to-go cups. See, Nobody knows who's who's. Who. It says yeah. your name you on mobile it. I get orders it. piss me off too, though, because we're sitting there waiting in line like like real Americans, and they like get we're to skip. To. Yeah. And you and your little AI tech bro friends are just be bopping around and just skipping on in and grabbing your drinks. Exactly. Yeah, so drinks. why don't you because adapt and adjust your to the drinks times. before my drinks, even though I'm actually there for them? We're not living in a third world country. We yeah. have technology that allows us to do so. That's American. Yeah. Whatever. Jake Zuckerberg. Also, like, Jake no one... No one that's going to Great a Starbucks <laughs> yeah, is Jake. carrying that's a Jake gun. <laughs> so like that's like that's like the and we could laugh about it because nobody was hurt, obviously, but like nobody at that Starbucks was carrying a gun. Like that's not a that's not a big gun crowd. So it's like the fact that Well, what state does he live in? I don't know. I feel you on the Starbucks trial, but if you're in a southern state, like somebody's maybe, probably got a concealed maybe. carry somewhere up in is there. Is he from? Let's see. I know it's the Arizona State. Is he from Florida? If it's in Florida, then I mean, all bets are off. So he knows he was, how many guns could be in that place. He was born in Minneapolis. I don't know the Minnesota. If it was uh, Minnesota, no. No, no, no. You know, no gun no, scene no, like no, that. Definitely not. <laughs> I mean, does like he still a, live in Baltimore? If he still lives pick. in Baltimore, um, I don't think he does. Okay. All right, we've okay. All big right. deal, no big. That's T Sizzle next. Yeah, uh, big deal or no big deal, Northwestern will play a majority of its home games at its operations building over the next two years oh. because <laughs> the school is completely renovating their stadium. Now it's an incredible facility. It's right there on the lake. It's going to look unbelievable. Have you seen the mock-ups? It's going to be like a stunning facility. So they're going to play, I guess, temporary structure, bleachers, whatever. They are going to play at their football facility for the next two years. T-Bob, I don't see a place. I'm looking at a picture of the facility. I don't know where you can put any stands, but I certainly don't know where you can put stands that's more than like 1,000 people. I Yeah, um, the timing of this is unfortunate because there actually probably is not – a more uh, over-exceeding expectation team than Northwestern last year. Yeah. I mean, Pat Fitzgerald was awful his last two years. You then lose the person that you thought was the best coach you've ever had um, right before the season starts, and you somehow end up going, what, 5-4 and four in the Big Ten? Uh, like, again, I don't think any team surprised more than Northwestern last year. So you actually build up some momentum. How do you keep that momentum than when you're playing in what feels like a high school stadium for the next couple I don't, of years? I don't really know how you do it. Now, easy, uh, you know, I, I guess travel. Like, you just literally walk out to your practice field, and, and that's your game. But, I, see, I don't know how you get any juice going. Uh, I, I don't know. Again, like, looking at the pictures of it, I don't know where you could put bleachers. Like, if LSU had this, they have four practice fields. So you, you could put bleachers in yeah, a lot, yeah, lot yeah, of different yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, it still yeah, would yeah, suck, but yeah. you can do it. Uh, like, if you put a bleacher on one of these sidelines, it's going to fall into the lake. So I, I, I mean, don't really it's know like how a it more, works. I mean, it's certainly going to be a more intimate environment. See, it could be cool if you could get, like, 15 or 20K because you would pack it out and you could maybe get, like, a rowdy 15. But if it is only, like, 1,000 or 2,000, then that just feels like some high school hairy yeah. horse dookie. Yeah, uh, Terrell Suggs was in Arizona, by the way, when he got arrested. Um, pretty good chance of a concealed carry there. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. What part of Arizona? No, I think I, I think it no, matters. I don't think it matters. Uh, Flagstaff. I don't know. I just like the. City <laughs> I just, I just feel like Flagstaff. the bigger cities know. I mean, you know. I don't know. Um, like rural Arizona for sure. And on April 16, 2010, Arizona's governor signed into law a bill that allows any individual age 21 or over to carry a firearm concealed on his or her person in public without a license or permit. There you go. There you go, Taylor. Big, dumb, stupid I, idiot. 
Um, all right, who's up yeah, next? Yeah, why don't you say it's Monday deal. again? Yeah. <laughs> Pull a gun on how's, you. Uh, how's uh, Luke Holman? He's still better than Paul Skeens? Yeah. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, okay. Relax. What, do you, what, what, is, what is that? What is that? You just. Gonna... I didn't say he was better. I say I would like... I, I'm just saying, I, Taylor can't. That's that's such an unfair game to play. Uh, you're just gonna don't you're take just gonna, shots. No, I mean, no, I don't, no. I'm saying what nobody. You never. You've never had a bad sports take. Oh yeah, for sure. Here publicly, yeah, absolutely, multiple. Okay. It's called honor amongst thieves. Okay, <laughs> just take your flagellations and move on. Okay, Mister. I'm just calling you Michael Monday. Okay, Michael that's a Monday. Good name. What do you got? Big deal or no? Big I know deal. A Michael Monday. <laughs> big really? deal or no big deal? <laughs> yeah. a great name. Bear Alexander, despite all the talk yesterday, is not entering the transfer what? portal. He is back at USC. He said he plans on winning a national championship there. Good luck with that, Bear. But yeah, not entering the transfer portal. Big deal or no big deal? It's no big. I mean, deal. Yeah, no big deal say, because yeah. it was never a big like. I mean, it was fun to play with. It was good content. I just feel like for there was segment. so much coverage of that yesterday, and then. About two thirty, he tweeted out. He's like, "No, I'm not." not Couple entering. elements. Um, there was probably some whispers as to that happening, combined with a slower news cycle. I mean, I don't know about y'all have been watching, but the college football news cycle has been, and maybe it's because we're used to such a torrid pace in the uh, in the immediate aftermath of the season nowadays. Yeah. But it has been Screw. dead. I mean, there they ain't been nothing happening. So the Bear Alexander story, obviously, and especially if you're an LSU fan and you need that. Yeah, and, and like I said importance. yesterday, like he's an okay player. He's he's a guy. He's not a dude. And but he had leverage if he did, in fact, because if I'm a player and I know I'm kind of gonna go into the portal, the second window is actually the better one because teams will panic and overpay in nil. But yep. uh, yeah, like we've been college basketball for like six weeks on off campus, and yeah. yesterday was like the first day we kind of got into spring football conversation but you're right t i mean it was like nascar speed for like six weeks after the season Oof. and then it just came into a crashing halt it's dried up completely now, uh, now we're in the uh coaching list season top 10 coaches yeah which again that one that we tweeted out from the 1045 account is doing numbers right now um and it's not even our list it's in like sports illustrated list yeah it even says like <laughs> via whoever and then people are freaking out <laughs> Um, I bet there was a plan behind that. We made some headway doing uh, most overrated coaches the other day. Hey, man, don't hate the player, hate the game. Shoot, the one we had was the, the uh, top five tailgating spots in the SEC. That was the one that, yeah, yeah, that everyone you know. freaked out about. Uh, big deal. We're or... talking Frozen Four today, by the way, if you want to listen to off campus. What? Well, Frozen Four action. Y'all are getting into the Frozen Four? We Let me guess. Let me have guess. to get into guess. everything. Minnesota is in there. I believe um, so. bro, you can't be talking Frozen Four. Not even know the Frozen Four teams yet. Come on, what are we doing? Uh, is UConn in there? No, I do know that. Minnesota. Uh, let me. There's what is the small school that's incredible at hockey that I'm not thinking of? So Quinnipiag Boston didn't make. Quinnipiag Quinnipiag is usually good. Quinnipiag didn't make. They won it okay, last year. Quinnipiag, Quinnipiag okay, made, won it last sure. year. Um, you're not gonna get them. Big dealer. Who are they? It's Boston College, who's the one seed. Denver, who's the three seed. Boston U, who's the two seed. And Michigan made it as an I unseeded team. Almost in Michigan, team. dude. Almost in Michigan. Michigan beat out. Michigan State five to two. Michigan State was the four seed. Minnesota lost to Boston U in the uh, quarterfinals. Uh, big deal or no big deal? We have now had it confirmed that in the original NBA Jam, if you were playing a Bulls. Pistons game. If the game is close entering the second half, the uh, developers coded it, wrote it into the code that the Bulls will fall apart and the Pistons will start to make everything. This was during the Bad Boys era. Apparently, the lead developer of NBA Jam was a massive Pistons fan, like and he that. used his power to make sure that the Chicago Bulls would be at a literal cheating coded disadvantage in the second half i kind of like that i love it <laughs> i mean that's 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 some real fandom right there dude yeah and, kinda, and it was rumored for years because people had kind of noticed it you know the hive mind had there been so much nba jam played through the decades and i want to say a couple of years ago he went on a podcast and finally confirmed it yeah good for him that's why i became a knicks fan not that i hated the bulls by any i mean i i appreciated jordan and how great he was and his mentality but i was like man everybody likes the bulls i want to pick a different team and so i went with john starts and the knicks until y'all made me become a pelicans fan which i'm grateful for yeah what are the knicks doing this year they're good oh okay. <laughs> were they 
four? They were five. Th- three yesterday. Were they three? Yeah. What? Three seed yesterday. East, East is such garbage. I think they actually had the same exact record as the Pelicans. Would they be like the nine seed in the West? If that. They'd I've be, got one. Be the six. Your no, best I'm not friend. talking record wise. I'm talking talent wise. I have one. Well, Brun- okay, what you got? Really your good best friend slash translator turning off your bank notifications so you don't notice <laughs> when he's stealing money out of your account. Big deal or no big deal? Oh uh, yeah, we forgot to mention this. So the latest in the Michuhara case is that yeah, that's exactly what he did was. Um, he's rumored to, it's, a, it's being reported by the Times that maybe he allegedly, stole more. Allegedly, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> allegedly stole more than the four and a half million. And that, oh, yeah, wow. he turned off all uh, noties and everything on Shohei's phone and uh, email. So he was, so, so that like nothing would pop up when this money was being transferred. That, <laughs> dude, my yeah, God. Yeah, big deal. Big and true. Deal. Oh. I still feel like he's, you know, taking a fall. I think the plea deal is going to be very interesting to he's see. He's plead negotiating. Guilty. Yeah, he's negotiating yeah. a plea deal right now. Going to be very interesting to see what that ends up looking like. One more, and I feel like this is like the, uh, I know the answer to everything or to this one. Big deal or no big deal, Jackson Holiday played in his first MLB in the show. I, got I'd called say, up. I'd say, you know, maybe not like a big deal for me personally, but obviously a big for deal him. if you're 20 years yeah. old and you make the bigs. It's crazy. He yeah. went 0 for 3, but he drove a run in. How about uh, Buster over ESPN yeah. tweeted in 2013? He's like, uh, Matt Holiday's son, Jackson, going to be a future all-star. He was nine. What? <laughs> he was nine years old, and Buster saw him like at the field, like, you know, just messing around with his dad. He's like, oh, that kid's going to play in the big leagues. Love that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That was, Did y'all see the... Uh, 2013 was 11 years ago, by the way. I don't, don't love that. Did y'all see the video of uh, how he got called up? Yeah. yeah. The manager? Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah, it was cool. As someone, I felt a lot of you know your dad energy in that video for sure. He know your dad. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go to break when we get back. Munchies, get your munchies questions in the chat, y'all. More Off the next. bench with Hester and T Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and eleven thirty the Tiger. Get Gordon and get it done. We uh, got the new Gordon grads giveaway. That's right, baby. If you are a uh, 2024 high school graduating senior, I want you to go to gordonsgrads.com. Gordonsgrads.com. You can find the details on how to enter to win. What will you win? One of 12 laptops that we're giving away to seniors across the state. So anywhere in the state of Louisiana, gordongrads.com, you can enter to win. And as always, if you get in an accident, 225-888-8888. Get Gordon and get it done. Also go to the website, getgordon.com. There you can get a consultation set up, a free consultation set up. You can have a chat right there on the website. You can find cases they can handle for you in the courtroom, past client results, all that information on the website, getgordon.com. On all major social media, it is at Get Gordon is always going to be the handle as well to see what they're doing in the community, just like T-Bob mentioned. Also, your number, your area code in Louisiana, followed by 888-8888. Get Gordon and get it done. Our listeners fire off their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard. Our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com.
I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. All right, welcome back into OTB. It is time now. It's Thursday, 924. You know our guy, Chef Michael Johnson, for a little munchies. Chef, what's going on? Hope you're doing well today. What's up, Jake? How are you, buddy? Doing, doing very well, actually. And I am so excited to talk with you, like we always are, even though I am starving. So we'll see how this goes. But before <laughs> T-Bob comes in here and messes this up, we want to ask you a yeah. very important question that we've been talking okay. about all week. Okay. Is tortilla, a tortilla, you know, tortillas, is that considered bread? Uh, I think to some degree it is. You know what I mean? Like the, it, 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 it is very much, you know, flour based. And, and there's so many, like it, to me, the definition of a bread is very broad. Um, now, uh, I have to say this, you know, like real tortillas are made from corn. And I don't know that I would consider that a bread. You know, like I, I, there are corn muffins. So, I don't, man, I don't know. You, now you have me spinning my own head here. You know, like, it, because Americans accept flour tortillas as, as, torti as, as tortillas, which I don't think they really are. Um, you know, like, if you're talking about flour tortillas, that's a bread to me. But if you're talking about corn tortillas made from maize or, or like, true corn, real corn, that's, that's, that's a little bit different for me for some reason, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, yeah, I feel you, you know. Kind of sounds like I was right to the answer, but sure. I think you're wrong. I, uh, I feel you. Maybe, maybe corn is the difference, even though, you know, technically we did look up that Encyclopedia Bread article the other day where... Um, it's not bread. They call it bread, but sure. It's not bread. Whatever. I don't think it, yeah. I don't, if it's made from corn, it's not bread for me. But if it's made from flour, that, that is that is the bread. I can actually, I, I can agree with that as a good compromise uh, between yep. the two sides. Uh, you like that? Compromise? But uh, one could argue if it's made from flour, it's really not a tortilla. So then we're, we're not really going to have Yeah, to yeah. And then we're getting into a bit of a semantic thing. Yeah. But then yeah. also, like, you know, culturally as American, have we also yeah. accepted that flour tortillas are tortillas? Yeah. It's it, yeah. the, the, the the rabbit hole goes deep. It's going deep, yeah. To be clear. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the one Mexican here says they're not bread, so... <laughs> oh, wow, look at you trying to pull uh, a xenographic rank here. Yeah. Like rank? Yep. Maybe? I don't know. Uh, hashtag munchies. What's a good springtime soup I could make? Um, gosh, I, I, I mean, I just like pull, I, I like pulling greens out of the garden in the springtime if, if you have early greens like sorrel. I used to make this spinach and sorrel, chicken spinach and sorrel soup. Um, now it's a little bit later. It's a little bit better later in the spring if you can have tomatoes with it, um, like fresh out of the garden. But um, like chicken broth, um, pulled chicken thighs, 
So I don't know if you guys have ever had sorrel before, but it's kind of it's it's lemony and peppery and um, it's it's very vibrant. So you put that in with your with your um, you know chicken broth and chicken, and then add some tomatoes in there. I'm going about that so backwards right now because that's not how I construct my soup. But um, just the flavor profiles, it's, it's brilliant. You know, like the, the spinach, it makes it kind of hearty and, and, and meaty with the chicken and, and the tomatoes and the sorrel kind of open it up with this acidity lemon flavor that's just wonderful. Um, hashtag munchies. Hey, I got one while you're looking. Uh, we talked so much, I, guess, I think it was Monday, maybe it was Tuesday, about a club sandwich and it being really like an elite room service order club sandwich and some french fries and a diet coke and i really want one right now uh yeah. but how would you construct your perfect club sandwich chef well I, it, first and foremost it's going to have some very thick bacon on it right every layer is going to have some very thick bacon okay. on it um like i like some really good uh you know for, uh, black forest ham or something that it's got a little character to it oh, yeah. the turkey probably going to be some applewood smoked turkey maybe even a cajun turkey you know like i yeah. like the spice on the cajun oh, hell smoked yeah. turkey um you know aioli you know that that's it, it can't be no it's not going to be miracle whip tea bob i'll tell you that okay relax yeah. guys relax <laughs> got a little <laughs> miracle whip i yeah, like I'll miracle whip it it is Whatever, okay. I'm not. I'm not yeah. fighting with you today about this. We're gonna put. <laughs> we're gonna put some like lemon garlic aioli on there. Yeah. So it's got a little got a little pop and some zing in it. Um, you know, fresh beefsteak tomatoes. And I and a, one of my favorite tomatoes is a Cherokee black or Cherokee purple tomato. That it, it's it's really dark in flavor. It has has a really really nice uh, flavor to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe even alter the the, the tomatoes like a, a beefsteak on one and a and a Cherokee purple on the other. Um, provolone and gouda, you oh. know, alternating. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. I mean, I think ooh. you could even squeeze another like a, a layer of cheddar in there if you wanted to, or or something. You know, like eat them or you know something something that's gonna melt nice. Um, and I don't know, you know, lots of butter on the bread, so it, so it browns up nicely. You gotta, and you have to cut, you have to toast both sides of the bread. So when you oh flip not the just bread the outside. Over, oh no, no no mm. no, you got. Flip, toast, both, toast both sides of the bread, and when you put the first side down, that's buttered. And when it flips over, you got a hot buttered toasted bread. That's when the cheese goes on, man. You know, like oh, the cheese, so you're gonna flip. So you're so you're gonna toast the inside of your sandwich first, yep. and yep. then it's when you flip, you already have a hot surface ready to start melting. Okay, chef, look at there that. There you go. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's the money right there. Um, yep. If you're making like a grilled cheese or a sandwich like this, uh, are you just buttering the bread? Do you, I've, I've heard some people do mayo on the bread. Um, obviously, I olive I mean, oil's I, in play. Yeah, I, 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 even an olive oil mayonnaise, you know, like olive oil. Well, you know, like aioli's made from olive oil. So, you know, you can put that on there and it's going to get fatty and greasy, but it's got to taste good. You know, it's gonna, And that oil helps accelerate the, the browning. You know, uh, it, it helps even the browning. So it's got to have some fat on there one way or the other. I, I like butter um, just as a traditionally French trained chef, but as, as a PNC guy too, you know, like I also have appreciation for olive oil. So, you know, uh, it's me, I'm going to probably brush aioli on it. Um, maybe just on one side and butter on the other so that, um, it's got a little bit of uh, character to it. Uh, hashtag munchies. If you had to enhance one of your senses to be a better chef, which one would it be? Oh, that's tough, man. Um, Gosh, because you know, you got to be careful at asking about smell, because you know, like I don't, I don't want to turn into a dog and smell the neighbor from from up, you know, down the no. road. Well, um, and can't smell be de- kind of deceiving at times? Like, isn't I mean, durian famously smells god awful, right? But doesn't it actually have like a sweet taste or something? Yeah, I don't know. You know, like I don't see the touch is going to be doing anything to me. Taste like kids. The reason kids don't uh, eat the same foods that you or I do. Is because their taste buds are so vibrant and so wow uh, that, that that the foods taste differently to, that, to them as you or I do. Our taste buds age and soften over time. So you know, like I don't know. That's a tough question, man. I, I guess yeah. So like paradoxically, increasing taste may not actually be yeah. the best thing. No, I, you know, like maybe just a bit of taste, a bit of scent, and and then I don't know. My eyes are going bad after forty. They went to hell. So <laughs> I'm just gonna say I. I'm just gonna say vision off the top, so I can. You know, like see the details in the food better while I'm constructing. I, you know, th- there is something to be said about that. No love for the hearing, man. I would love uh, to be able to know, hear that sizzling fajita plate at an even deeper, yeah, more but profound it, but T, level. If you had to lose, uh, you had to lose something. 
And if I had yeah. to lose a sense, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd probably be I hearing. Mean, yeah, for sure. I love to be able to hear, but there's a, there's also peace in ignoring people all day long. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I've, I, I sometimes you know have have envisioned or, or pretended that I'm deaf. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I am with you. I've never thought about that before. Hearing without a doubt the the least yeah. cool sense to have. If, um, if I could turn hearing on and off, I most certainly would. <laughs> Uh, sometimes it seems like my wife does. <laughs> know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Um, hashtag munchies. Uh, favorite vegan dish. Ooh, another tough one, Chef. That's an oxymoron, brother. <laughs> okay, okay. Hashtag no, munchies. Uh, I knew that was going. <laughs> what is your uh, favorite form of potatoes? Um, Hasselbeck potatoes. So you take a, you take a, a whole, like, Matt? Idaho baked potato and you, you fly it, like, Sorry, I made a bad Matt and Tim Hasselback joke. I'm sorry, Chef. I stepped. Okay, go ahead. Hasselback potatoes. Go ahead. Now I have, now I see it. Harry, never mind. I, <laughs> I, I went to Baywatch and, and yeah, never mind. Uh, anyway. Oh, Hasselhoff, yeah. Oh yeah, I had the wrong name altogether. Anyway, um, so Hasselback potatoes. You take a knife and you slice like 90 percent of the way down through the potato. Okay. So that just, just this little kind of sliver of potato holds on together, and 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 that's when it's raw. Um, and so when you bake it, it kind of flowers out and blooms a little bit. And you can br- butter and brush, um, like, oil, uh, Parmesan cheese. It, you can almost treat it like a stuffed artichoke, right? Like, you, you can season down inside of those little those little slivers and slots. And um, that's, that's definitely my favorite kind of potato. Um, in, in answer to the vegan dish, like, I, I, I like to challenge myself to be able to do stuff for vegans. And, and you know, like, I don't like all the vegan um like impossible burger and and beyond stuff because when you look at the when you look at the construction of it now understand we do serve that stuff because the vegans love it but it's it's got a lot of preservatives and a lot of yeah you know like chemical stuff in there that yeah i I really don't want in the body you know what i mean just because it's vegan doesn't mean it's healthy yes Um, yeah that's fair um I, i i personally you know like i can make a pretty mean vegan mac and cheese with uh um, so no dairy involved anywhere in there? Yeah, right. Like oh, oat wow. milk and turmeric, and um, uh, activated or they have this uh, nutritional yeast is what it's called, and it, it makes things umami or savory, and and uh, it also helps thicken it up a bit and give it consistency. And I, I can make a pretty mean um, vegan mac and cheese that that most of the vegans here that we do have some vegans here that um, they they really enjoy. Also, would it would behoove me if I didn't say this that you know like. Um, Taking a lion's mane mushroom and and grilling it like a steak and pressing it with a with a little weight and brushing it with butter, that as as you as you grill it, that butter absorbs into the mushroom and it gets crisp on the outside. Really? And it's nice and oh god, man! Grilled lion's mane mushrooms are fantastic, man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm gonna trust. So you. that's something you can enjoy. Yeah. Uh, all right, chef. The other day we were talking about our guy Hanny. There's nothing that gets Hanny. Uh, more excited than some jasmine rice. My man talks oh. about jasmine rice all the time. My kids, like we introduced that to them a couple of weeks ago, and they love it. What yeah. is like what? What's the difference in jasmine rice just compared to normal white rice? Well, it's a long grain floral rice. It's 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 a different plant, different species, but it's floral, right? It's it's uh it's lower than lower sugar content, I believe, than normal rice. Like it doesn't have the, the same amount of carbs in it. It's, it's um, but it's floral, you know, it's, it just, it smells wonderful when you cook it. Um, but it, it cooks slightly different too. It's not a highly glutinous rice. It it's lower in the, in the uh, glutinous factor. And so, you know, like high glutinous rice is like sticky rice or, or, yeah. uh, sushi rice, right? Like right. it'll stick together. And the beautiful thing about jasmine rice is it remains fluffy and will stay as, as individual little grains in the dish. Um, but the really pe- people really love the floral to it. What are you thinking about over there, T. Bob? Um, oh, I thought I, I was. I'm thinking about Hasselback potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Chef, he had this. He had this look on his face like he was in deep, deep thought, and I didn't know where he was right now. Hey, oh man, I gotta be honest. I zoned out during the rice, and um, I'm, I'm. I think I'm absolutely making Hasselback potatoes tonight. Oh uh, yeah, that's fantastic. So that's where that's where my 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 head was at. With a little garlic butter, whatnot. Yeah, I'm just looking yeah. up. Looking up some techniques for cutting it so you don't cut all the way through, like laying chopsticks down on the side of the potato. That's on go. me. That's, That's on me. It. Got a little distracted. Yeah. That's on me. Um, chef, I love you. Thank you so much, yeah. man. You are the man. 
You're the best. Likewise. Thank, Thank you, guys. You have a great day. Bye. Um, all right. When we get back, more OTB. Keep it locked. Off the bench with Hester and T Bob. Two of these potatoes look good, Bob. I gotta look it up. It looks so good. All Star Toyota Baton Rouge.com. All Star Toyota Baton Rouge.com. You need a, a new vehicle, a Toyota certified used vehicle. Uh, you want to rent, you know, a lease. It's all there for you at All Star. You need a body shop or a service center. Your car needs uh, some work. Okay, bring it in All Star. Located very conveniently off of Airline and Goodwood. All makes and models welcome. Uh, insurance claims welcome. You mentioned OTB, T Bob, Jake, whatever. You get $100 towards that deductible. If you mention Taylor, you have to pay $100 more. So don't do that. Yeah. Um, that's not true. Uh, All-Star right, Toyota Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota of Baton Rouge.com. Yeah, $200 charge if you mention Taylor. So don't do that. Mention T-Bob. Mention Hester. Uh, go to the website. Check out what they have for you. Buying new, leasing, renting. And we tell you every day, in the rental department, everything is available. And you're not going to find that anywhere else. Per day rental prices. All-Star Toyota of Baton Rouge.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes Benz Vans. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Uh, welcome back to OTB. Some crazy breaking news here. Uh, literally just broke about five minutes ago. But uh, the family of OJ Simpson announcing that he has uh, passed away. 
after a long battle with cancer. Uh, I don't think we were even really publicly that aware that maybe he was battling cancer, but um, <clears throat> O.J. Simpson uh, has passed away. It's I don't know exactly how to handle this in Sir, I mean, certainly condolences to friends and family, um, but obviously this is somebody who people are going to have very strong opinions about either way. Um, I still think for my money, him writing the if I did it story was pretty insane uh, and pretty effed up. Um, but uh, yeah. I mean, can't go to trial for the same thing twice. Yeah. Yeah. What do they call that? Double Jeopardy? Double Jeopardy, yeah. Good movie if you've movie never seen well. it. I've never seen it. Ashley I know Judd, it. I think. Okay, shout out Ashley Judd. 90s legend. I love the Judds. Um, I love Judd Apatow. Yeah. I mean, does funny. anybody, like, what do you say Like, what do you say when I mean, it's OJ News? You report it, you report the news, and you move on. Okay. I think. He's I mean, back I don't, with his yeah. love. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yes, of course. I mean, the memes on, on Twitter speak to the uh speak to maybe how complicated his legacy is because it's just a whole bunch of uh kind of effed up jokes here uh and now the group text messages are rolling in (laughs) um yeah uh Hasselback potatoes though huh oh i looked up a picture of them they they look super good they look super good yeah i'll report back tomorrow let you know if the kids like him why not where am I going to get my club sandwich from? McAllister's. Actually, to be fair, your place, uh, Alexander's, is a pretty good club. Yeah, it does. If you've never had the Alexander's yeah. club. If you're a sweet tea guy, they've got the best sweet tea at McAllister's. McAllister's, yeah. yeah. McAllister's is great. Um, <laughs> hadn't quite figured out the service uh, part of it here in the new one in Baton Rouge. I, bro, I haven't house. been to McAllister's in damn over a decade. Oh, I feel like, the I feel like that was every now and then I would staple. get a, Yeah, yeah. And that's why, again, because yeah. my 318 friends would want to go there. Uh, I used to get an open face roast beef, which wasn't bad. Um, I also love creating something called like an open face sandwich when it's just like, ah, we just laid out a piece of bread and then slopped roast beef all over it. They got a good uh, And now you have there. to eat it with a fork. Avo says McDonald's is the best sweet tea. Is that true? No. Their, yeah. their sweet tea is good. I have, an Mc, I have McAllister's once a year. I love it. In Gatlinburg, because we always do like a picnic in like one of the parks. It's that time of year again. Time yeah, for we, some McAllister's. It, it is, dude. That's the only time. That's the only <laughs> time we kids, ever have. We got to go to Gatlinburg. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's the only time we ever have it. I love McAllister's. Best uh, sweet tea, though? I don't know. Maybe Cane's. Cane's sweet tea's good. Yeah. What's this new Korean bowl place? Tick tocky? Talky tocky? Toki toki? You might know a, what I'm talking about. I've been on a um, like Japanese Korean barbecue sauce. Like, Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just the best flavor. And, 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 and on, on that like, but like on everything. Yeah. That, have, have you ever. Oh, wait, wait, oh, wait. You're talking about the Japanese barbecue sauce? Yeah. With a little octopus man on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I've been on that for probably. Damn near half a year now, and yeah, I'm with you. I put yeah, it on every started like a month ago. Bro, I like can't. Air, it sucks. But... I almost can't eat jambalaya without it now. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. I hadn't tried it on that, but that I sounds mean, delicious. Anything with rice, I'm putting it on. Uh, that's why it started. Like we got some jasmine rice because of my man Handy Man yep. selling it through the yep. radio, and went and got some. And usually, I like I'll throw some soy sauce on there. No, the Did other day the, uh, I was just uh, cutting out the middleman. And I was shoveling jambalaya into my mouth and then squirting the sauce in on top of it. <laughs> it don't have to be a specific brand for me, but like, no, the Korean what? barbecue. I just wanted a couple bites. Place. I didn't want to make a whole bowl. So just just put some rice in there and then give it a little. And then uh, walk away from the fridge. Squish it around a little bit. Five minutes later, come back and do the same thing. And then just rinse and repeat. Yeah, pecan. Uh, B-A-C-H-A-N is what it is. I also got the miso flavored one and the jalapeno flavored one. I'm, I'm, but at the at the end of the day, the, the original is the best. But yeah, that is just pure is good, though. umami that. flavor. Yeah. For sure. Sorry. Umami. Uh, what are you saying? No, like any wing place, like the Korean barbecue, right. whatever it is. Like in, in, they, they all have their own variations, right? Like Pluckers has like a sesame something. Buffalo Wild Wings has Asian zing. Wingstop has spicy Korean Q, but they're all basically the same thing. Yeah. Always the best flavor. Yeah, a little sweet heat. A little sweet and savory heat for sure. Um, all right, when we get back, let's do a little Ask the Bench. Brought to you by Cole Kurz Live. Visit our Tilton Blue Moon Light Sky. Sit you sweet. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. 
Go to Community Steel Driving Company. European car? Trust Next European for specialized your- service and repair. With 40 plus years of expertise, our certified technicians ensure top quality auto repair for cars like Porsche, Audi, Land Rover, even exotics like Lamborghini and Ferrari. Book your appointment today at VexEuropean.com. Go Tommy's. Tommy here from Tommy's Windows, Doors, and Siding, reminding you to put that tax refund to work for you. How? By lowering your electric bills. New windows, doors, and siding could do that for you, like it has for so many of our great customers over the years. Go to GoTommy's.com. Check out our products, our five-star reviews, and our local team. Then set up your free quote. That's G-E-A-U-X Tommy's.com for Tommy's. trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also... Yoda presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What's happening, y'all? Welcome back. OTB. Ask the Bench. Brought to you by Cold Curse Life. Is the Art Seltzer. Blue Moon. Light Sky. Citrus Sweet. I was just looking outside, and it was crazy. I saw a, a cloud shaped like a white Bronco, and there were five other clouds behind it. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. Sign of the times. Ask the Bench. They say famous people die in threes. Who are the next two? Well, so what, no, like we, we discussed this that. the other day. Yeah. OJ is three, right? He because is, it was remember? it was Toby Keith, and who was right before Toby Keith? Apollo Toby. Creed. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Carl yeah. Weathers, and I Toby said, Keith, and then there was a third. You one. did say who's I did be say the three. who's the third. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we, OJ is the third. Those, I mean, there's probably been a lot of deaths since then, though. I, mean, I know, those but are I guess pretty like, long ago. I feel like we're kind of stretching the the Toby window was here. What, month ago. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Over? I mean, I that's mean, not exactly that long ago. Uh, it's not not long ago either. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Ask the bench. Um, this news about OJ cuts deep, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. yeah <laughs> so there we go. There we go. There's a lot of that going around. Um, so it's like goodbye, Twitter world. I don't know if this is true. Gabe, Nobody Gabe said. Gray Bear says in an interview, Barbara Walters asks OJ if he thinks he'll remarry again. He says, I don't know. One of these days I might take another stab at it. Ooh. <laughs> Have you seen the video of him? I, I don't remember. It may be ABC or something. 
and he like walks up to the girl with a knife or something. And Wait, he, like, oh, yeah. 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 I just saw this online yeah. because, as I said, the memes and jokes, everybody's going really it a, crazy. It was, a, it was a long time ago. I'm like, yeah. bro, OJ, you cannot have that footage out there. Well, uh -uh. You don't get to make psycho stabbing jokes. Because he was like, ree, ree, yeah. ree, I don't, like, you don't get to do that. It wasn't terribly long after, right? Yeah, like it, it wasn't, wasn't. This was not like a recent video. No, it was not a recent video at all. So I'm saying it was not terribly long after the whole incident so, occurred. So do you, do we think that now that he died, that it's going to come out that he was Khloe Kardashian's dad? Uh, I don't know how aware I am about anything that you just there's said. A, there's a big rumor about that that she's Khloe's dad. Yeah, because him what? and Rob were really good friends, and then apparently, well, because Rob was his lawyer during yeah. the trial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If the glove Don't doesn't fit. fit, you must acquit. An all-time line. Johnny Cochran from Shreveport. Really? Yep. Good? I guess. I mean, a very good defense attorney. Look, it's the defense attorney's job to get Man, that guy off. Yeah, did his job. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Um, Avo OJ wrote a book called If I Did It. Yeah, I mean, that's that's just awful. Again, that is the thing I was like... Are Sasha Baron Cohen and Isla Fisher, Isla Fisher? Uh, Isla Fisher yeah, I saw yeah, they got yeah. it. Yeah. I did think they, they really announce it with that tennis post? Did you see this? Yeah, I did see it. It was like, I mean, I guess it's in keeping with them, but it was like very funny. It was like after 20 years of playing single or of playing like doubles or something, we're ready to play. I was like, what? But then again, I guess Sasha Baron Cohen has always been a bit absurdist. Yeah. To be fair. She's great. And now you, now you see me. I forgot Ooh, about I those love movies. That. I, that's a good They're movie. They're good movies. I got to say, guys, that Civil War movie made by Alex Garland. Yeah, did Ex good. Machina, did Annihilation. I actually did not think the preview looked good. Uh, I was kind of on the fence, but I do love Jesse Plemons. But, um, and I love Kristen Dunst. And they're married. Oh, are they? How about that? I did not know that. Neither did I. Love that for them. I thought she was with Tobey Maguire. Uh, yeah, so did I. Just no. Um, <laughs> I God, I, that was probably one of my... I mean, small soldiers. I had such a crush on Kirsten Dunst. I was her age, guys. Relax. Uh, and Spider-Man in Elizabethtown. No one I mean, brought that up, too. Um, I'm just saying that was one of my big, big childhood crushes. So her and Jesse Plemons together makes me very happy. Jesse I think Plemons awesome. has a, like, he, he's got a unique look. He's got yeah, a je ne sais quoi. Yeah. Not yeah. traditionally, like, handsome or a leading man, good looking, but has that... Uh, certain uh, magnetic sort of charisma that a lot of these stars end up having. Anyway, that Civil War movie's got like a 90 on Rotten Tomatoes. So mm. I'm very much in because uh, I love Alex Gordon. I'm going to watch uh, The Gentleman. We've all watched it. I'm going to watch the movie. Yeah. I just, I, like, I, I don't I don't know that I've seen it. I the movie's think good. Is that the McConaughey one? Yeah. yeah. yeah so I'm going to watch the movie to the series that we all just finished. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Smith asked Vince, why would California and Texas ever team up, uh, like, according to the movie? I mean, again, we talked about this. I think we originally spoke on Civil War, but, like, there's a lot more redneck in California than you're maybe yeah. yes. giving Northern, John Party. Yeah, Northern California is like. Yeah. I think Gary Stewart's from there, too. There's been, like, a ton of, too. Yeah. There's been, like, a ton of, like, that's where, like, I mean, maybe it's more packed Northwest, like, Oregon and stuff, but, like, a ton of, like. Anarchists no, and like other Gary people Stewart. like I'm that. Telling you, like in like places like San Diego, people? like that's a military town. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it's got some grit to it that nobody talks about. Now that is a good question. How do you overcome those military bases if you're California, or maybe the soldiers <laughs> are in on it? I don't know. I'm excited to see. We'll see. Maybe get in this weekend. All right, that'll do it for today's show. We love you, Aspen. Run back, Colker's life is there. Some blue lines. See you tomorrow. Off the bench with Hester and T Bob. Ignite your career by joining MMR. MMR is the largest privately owned electrical and instrumentation contractor in the nation. And right now, they're seeking talented individuals to join the team. For over three decades, y'all, MMR has been headquartered right here in Baton Rouge. They have offices all over the globe. And whether you're a student, you're just beginning your career, or you're a seasoned professional, MMR offers tailored paths for professional and personal development, coupled with outstanding benefits and a dynamic culture. Go view the campus here in Baton Rouge. Set up a tour if you can, and you're going to be blown away, guys. And it speaks to the culture. And so, look, again, no matter your experience level, like I said, MMR offers a variety of positions just for you. So build your future with MMR by applying now at MMRGRP.com. Apply now, MMRGRP.com. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further.
like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Oh, shoot, I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah 